Well, welcome back everybody. This is Brother Meat here. Today we are doing another viewer requested build, I think. Uh, I have to say this as a caveat because, again, I'm kind of getting behind on my videos. Sorry about that, guys. Uh, with these new mods that I've added, I've added a lot more potential, which means I have to spend a lot more time researching what each mod is giving me. Uh, so we're going to kind of be doing things on the fly here. Uh, this was the uh, undead, um, uh, forcing your character to be an undead from level 1 on up for a vivisectionist build, where you two-weapon wield. I think I promised that to somebody, I hope a while back uh, so I'm trying to basically make good on that if I am missing the mark here or I forgot I mean, maybe it was a different type of one the character that I was making feel free to post down below also if there's another video that I still have yet to do with I know I have a laundry list still to catch up on that doesn't mean I have the complete list at my disposal so feel free to again remind me down below hey have you thought about finishing this build or whatever it was I was supposed to do and again as much info as you can give me for what I was trying to attempt like if it was a, a specific uh, sword and board, or if it was a two-handed wielding son of a bitch, if it was going to be undead, if it was going to be using mods, stuff of that nature always helps me out, guys. So feel free to post that down below. I don't take offense to that. Just don't say, hey, jackass, you forgot to do my build, because I forgot to do lots of people's builds, and I'm, I'm kind of getting a little too much on my plate to catch them up. So I need to start dealing with them daily here to try to get these things out the door. Oh, on that, let's get to this one. So we're using Bag of Tricks, Call of the Wild, and Highlight Learnable Scrolls, as well as our Elder Charcana for this build. So these are the mods that I have installed. Uh, the ones that really are important here are the Elder Charcana and Call of the Wild. It's going to add a lot of bang for our buck. We're going to make a literally a two-handed wielding, or sorry, two-weapon wielding uh, um, uh, vivisectionist that is undead. So for those of you that wanted to see something like that, this is going to be the build for you. Uh, to do this properly, you need to do... Um, mods you can do this without uh, uh again the, the vanilla version of the game allows it however it really is hard to do and i would not recommend it um uh, being undead really is more difficult than you think uh and as a result uh people really kind of jive on the fact that with the elder jarcana mod you can make yourself undead really at level one and that's the real get go over here uh for this build you want to be an intelligence based character doesn't mean you have to be an elf. I don't even remember what I did the last time. I would assume that elf uh, uh, for an intelligence deck space build makes the most sense. That doesn't mean you have to anymore. With these uh, Call of the Wild mods that I'm using, they have added a lot of feats that allow for two weapon fighting on a strength based build. Now, you may say, why would I care about that? Don't you want decks as extra armor and so on and so forth? Sure, but remember, vivisectionists do get to wear armor and there's plenty of other buffs and spells that they can cast on themselves, which is going to be amazeballs for them. And if you want strength-based build and intelligence, obviously, the, the two stats that you give a rat's ass about, then you can really pump a little bit extra in charisma, and that's going to be how you get your, your HP up, because con stat's going to go through into the toilet uh, as a result of being undead. But then charisma is used then to, to beef up your HP as well as your fortitude. That's how undead do it. So we don't have to go elf is my point to you. And again, you could still, because again, uh, Dex Intelligence Base Build is still a solid choice. Charisma can be getting a little bit of love, maybe 12 or 14 down here. And with the con, you're jumping into the toilet, it doesn't matter. Because again, you're undead, and con isn't an issue for you. So there's reasons to want to do this. Uh, I would shy away from Gnome, simply because while the charisma is nice, the con is useless. I mean, we'll have to take those points away anyway and put them elsewhere. Uh, and they really don't benefit from the illusion magic for being a vivisectionist. Uh, you could make a case for, I suppose, uh, yeah, Halfling because of the Dex Charisma. And matter of fact, I think that's how we're going to go today. So let's actually find us a nice, psychopathic-looking vivisectionist that is a Halfling. Uh, now, these are uh, really good ones here, but these are all clearly dwarves. Uh, we got some really good pissed-off dwarf uh, picks lately. Uh, but I think I added a few of the Halflings. This is going to be Elves. Oh, you can kind of convince me that some of these characters, because you can't really see scale of size of the, the character, that these could be gnomes, for example, or halflings. I mean, it just depends on how big they are and how big that weapon technically is. So as long as there's nothing really, like, ruining the scale. I mean, here's an example of a, a clear sneak thief halfling. Uh, but again, we, we have a variety of ways of, of teasing out some of these characters, is my point. Um, so we have this one here. Matter of fact, she looks like she's going to be making alchemy, so that's actually not the bad, the worst idea. Let's actually take that one. Uh, we'll go next. Uh, first, we have race halfling. We need to make her hair clearly red. I really need to get the hair mods working again because I miss all the cool hairstyles. Yeah, they had a really nice one. If you use the uh, hair unlocker mod, where she has buns in her hair, 
looks actually quite badass in almost every one. The reason I say that is because also there's only one long hair picture here for Halfling, and that's this one here, and I kind of hate it. It's, it's Lindsay's look, and it's not that it's a bad look. It's just I keep thinking of Lindsay, and I don't want her to be Lindsay. Um, so is she going to be uh, extra wide? Is she going to be scrawny? Uh, she's a sneak thief, so maybe she's extra scrawny. She starved on the streets for a little bit while she made herself a vivisectionist. That sounds good to me. All right, so now we're going to go alchemist. And now notice I could uh, dip into other ones. So we have toxicant, preservationist, uh, has other bombs and such, but toxicant is another viable option here for sneak attack. Uh, and they get this wonderful mechanic, which we've yet to explore, this toxic secretion. I'm not going to do that one today uh, because, again, I haven't read up on it. I haven't even made a, a fake build on it to try to, to figure it out for myself. I'm just trying to get her color scheme down here, guys. Uh, so she needs to be green. Some uh, green in the middle like that. It's probably a little too dark. Let's do that one. There we go. Um, so the point is, is uh, for the vivisectionist, the really reason it was important was because of the sneak attack love. Uh, this is amazing because if you go two weapon fighting, you can just choppity choppity choppity, and it gets really OP from there. Uh, uh, you get three attacks, let's say in one hand, and three attacks in the off hand, and now suddenly you're doing you know ten d six of damage uh, and more uh, by the end of the build, and that gets quite powerful. So again, it works for vivisectionist. I'm sure it would work for intoxicant as well. Uh, but I'm going to go with the vivisectionist because that's what we said we would do. Um, because of this mod, we have a, a dip in skills that you can use uh, as far as how many points they give you. Um, I forget how that happens. I'm sure that's called the Wild that does that. But they kind of give it back to you by letting you pick a favorite class. Now, by doing that, you have to pick at each level are you getting a free hit point. So up to 20 by the end of the build or a free skill rank, which will be what I'll be doing all the way through it, just so we're clear on that. Uh, as far as abilities, we don't need Charisma. We're using it for, for Fortitude, but uh, and for HP. You see that this is going to look bad, but in a minute this is going to be amazing. So we want to get this up to a solid 16. We got Intelligence up to a solid 16, and really that's kind of the stop there. We don't need it any higher. Uh, dexterity, you could probably push it a little more if you wanted to get it to 19. Matter, matter of fact, that'd be really good because that unlocks all the abilities you would need then, uh, feet-wise, for getting two-weapon fighting, improved two-weapon fighting, and greater two-weapon fighting. They have a uh, dexterity requirement of uh, 15, 17, and 19, respectively. So I don't like being reliant on gear. If you've ever watched any of my videos, you know why. But uh, there's another way around it, and I want to show you that here real quick before we go any further. I could, for example, uh, make a character uh, that is strength-based. And you may say, well, how the hell does that work for two-weapon fighting? There is a feat available now, prodigious uh, two-weapon fighting or something like that, where literally it's a strength-based feat pick. It would, of course, require that you pick that feat, uh, and it literally does nothing more than uh, two things. One, it allows you to, to, to do-wield weapons that are not light, you know, one in your offhand, one in your main hand. Normally, you have to have a light weapon in your offhand to be at a, a minus two penalty to your swing. Otherwise, it's at minus four and minus four for both weapons. That sucks. That's why you can't longsword and longsword normally. But with this feat, you can because it treats the offhand weapon as light no matter what. So long as it's a one-handed weapon, it's considered a light weapon. But it does more than that, that feat. The feat also unlocks the ability to treat any of the dex-based requirements for two-weapon fighting, improved two-weapon fighting, and greater two-weapon fighting to be strength-based instead of dex-based, which means that if you had a strength of 19 or greater, you could be two-weapon fighting, improved two-weapon fighting, and greater two-weapon fighting just like a dex character. Which is awesome. So, like, you can make a fighter that is a, a clumsy fucktard, but still two weapon fighting like a, a Ginsu chef. And that's amazing because you can have some serious fun there. So, we could do this, but the downside is, is as you can see, we're hampered here by being a halfling, getting no higher than 16. We could, of course, dump five points or four points into it and get it all the way to 20 and still be fine. It's just weird to do so. Uh, if you did that, then again, you'd probably want to have more intelligence so that you can cast uh, better. Uh, I would probably even go so far as to lower down some wisdom here maybe to get a little bit of dex get a little bit of that and like so but that's again weird we have a lot of odd numbers everywhere so that's just not a, a suggestion that i'm making to you what i'm suggesting is that you really go for that 19 here floor that constat get your intelligence up and again um we still have points besides so we could literally go like so or I'm trying to find the best possible solution here for you guys. Give me a second. 
Um, no. Also, no. I'm trying to, to end with uh, one odd, not counting Khan, because Khan's going to be a non-starter. So, can I do this? Uh, no, it's not going to work there. Oops. That's not bad. Wisdom is crap. Uh, but that's an issue that you can deal with with feats and traits and spells. So I'm not too worried about that. Uh, and this is still going to be a solid tune. As a matter of fact, I like the extra charisma because that plus four here is really going to mean a lot more HP for you and a lot uh, better fortitude for your character. So a lot more survivable for an undead character. Yeah, I dig it. I think this is our spread. So 8, 19, 7, 16, 7, 18. That's what we're going to go with. And again, that 7 is going to be a dash here before too long. Five skill points, and that's not very many. Even with an intelligence of 16, that's still pretty crappy. Uh, but you would probably want to have trickery. Uh, you probably unlock your deck space stuff, so mobility, trickery, and stealth eventually. Uh, I'll unlock just these two for now. Uh, knowledge Arcana is always a solid choice. So is Knowledge World. Uh, perception is always a solid choice. And again, if these ones don't tickle your fancy, again, you got Lower Nature and use Magic Device, which is a solid choice for you, especially since if this is a solo build, which it can be, uh, you would want to use Magic Dice for sure because you want to be able to unlock um, uh, 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 the ability to use like wands and scrolls and stuff that aren't part of your Vivid Section of Spell list. Which, by the way, we have yet to see what a Vivid Section of Spell list looks like now that we have Call of the Wild on. Uh, there might be even more spells that are cooler, which is awesome. This is give us some, some really good fun stuff to, to play around with. Now, I don't know what kind of character you want to make it's, it's officially. Uh, the Wisdom being a problem means probably Lord Nature is a bad idea. But again, there's ways around that. If you want lore nature, run with that thing. If you want knowledge arcana for identifying magic items, do that thing. I'm not going to steer you away from it. But know that the intelligence isn't going to get much better than this. From here, uh, notice that we have physique drawbacks. Uh, again, we need to go to you were cursed. Notice here, which is cursed is not the one you want. You want undead curse. Well, how do you do that? If you right click it, it will tell you. You need a spell focus of any kind, weirdly. Or spell focus necromancy. Again, I don't know why they have that delineated because obviously spell focus necromancy is a spell focus. So really they should have just deleted that. But honestly, I think they should have deleted this one. It should have been spell focus necromancy. If you're an undead curse, chances are it's because you were studying necromantic arts. Or you worship Urgothoa. So this is the easiest way. So notice deity. If you pick Urgothoa, this now... Uh, hey, get back out of there. cursed. Now it's available. See that? So again, this is the easiest way to do it. Now the downside of this is this means you have to be evil, lawful, or well, I guess you'd be true neutral, but you can be any of these alignments and that's it. This is why I don't usually go this route, but there's no problem with this. And again, I don't mind being neutral. So you can totally be a neutral murdery uh, uh, undead character. Again, what, whatever you want to play. And quite frankly, undead, if you're not evil, you're probably neutral, quite frankly, because uh, you just don't give no fucks. Uh, from here, this uh, unlocks three traits for us. And again, not only is that going to be awesome for us, because again, now we're you know, vulnerable to fire, holy, divine attacks, as well as immune to a variety of other things because we're undead. Uh, and I'll let you explore that at your leisure. But notice that once we do this, see the dash. And again, you see how the health is 12. See how it's 11. See how it's 12 again. It's based on this now. The plus four. There was eight before. Now we're adding four more to it. We're up to 12. Same with your fortitude. You see where it says undead creature plus four? That's coming from this. Now, we're not going to make this go any higher. So this is lame, but it's not that lame. I mean, then we're at a seven and a seven and a minus one. This is the lame one, and it's because of this crappy wisdom. We can get around that. And again, I'm going to show you ways to do that. I'll see if I can do that right now. Social traits. Uh, well, first, uh, what skills might I want to unlock? Mobility might be fun to unlock. Persuasion might be fun to unlock. Um... See anything in here? Well, first let's skip to our combat trait. We know we're going to grab Blade of Society. Uh, if you're doing any kind of solo build, I highly recommend this one and this one alone. Blade of the Society allows you to do a sneak attack die of damage at level 3 on up. Only 1d6 plus 1. That's important. If you have sneak attack die already, it adds another plus 1 to each die. So in 10d6 plus 1d6 makes 11d6 plus 11 by the end of the build. And we have a spell, Sense Vitals, which I think you can cast on yourself, which can bring you up another 5d6. So we're talking a total of 16d6 plus 16 damage per sneak attack, and we're going to go two weapon fighting, 
improved two weapon fighting and greater two weapon fighting with some light weapons like daggers, which are awesome, by the way. And you're going to choppy choppy like no one's business. Literally, you're shredding stuff better than anybody. You know, um, that's a solid choice. Uh, and I highly recommend Blade of Society just to prove to yourself that there's not something else in here. Nope, looking good. Okay, from here, campaign trait. There's a specific noble born. Oh, also, I will point out that with Call of the Wild, and I don't know why this is, but the optimistic gambler has been changed. Notice now you can't pick awesome stuff anymore. You get to pick limited spell picks, and they're always the uh, this random list. So we got uh, level one. We got hex vulnerability, see invisibility, protection from energy communal, icy prison, which I can't even cast, greater rejuvenate Eidolon, which again I wouldn't use, chain lightning, which I don't have. Greater Shadow Conjuration, an amazing spell. Uh, I'm sure it is. I haven't seen it yet, but I'm fairly certain. But notice that that's um, this new uh, Optimistic Gambler spell that they've added. Now notice the weapon bonus stuff. These again, again, are randomized, I believe, as well. So again, you still can go right-click and scroll down, but I think they're always the same. Here's a Star Knife. Those aren't bad, but don't kid yourself. Those are not the worst thing ever. And it's a plus three bonus to your attack with that weapon. Here is a... Animal Companion, you get a Smilodon. I don't even know if that works. Some of these have been broken in the past. Uh, we get a Favorite Enemy Outsiders. Pretty weird. And here is... Cash Shot Grass at Will. Your successful melee touch attack deals 1d6 damage uh, per cash level maximum of 5d6. Now that wouldn't be the worst thing ever for this character. Again, the free and shocking grass isn't a touch attack. Die roll, which means sneak attack is applicable. So while 5d6 doesn't sound that great, Add another, what do we say, 16d6 plus 16 on top of that shit. So uh, a level one spell, or at least a once a day use spell, could be a 21d6 plus 16 damage. That sounds pretty good to me. But I'm not doing that. Uh, what am I doing? So instead of that, you go to Nobleborn, uh, and then you have to pick a specific, let's say it's Lebeda, uh, a family tree, basically. Notice that we have Alchemy Mutagen. We can use the Mutagen one more time a day. And this is an amazing upgrade for your character. If you were a gnome, we could have taken gnome alchemy feat where you could have used this two more times a day. So you could have had three uses a day up to maybe four if they stack. I don't know that they do. But again, that's pretty powerful. This one here, though, alone is enough to make me happy because two uses a day, especially early levels, really, really helps. Once you finally get to the point where it's like lasting for hours at a time, it's, it's inconsequential. You don't even need the second one. But you'll happily take it. From here, uh, let's see, uh, equipment trait. Normally we take a family heirloom so they give us a magic weapon right off the bat. And again, they've expanded the list. Thanks to Call of the Wild. Thank you, Call of the Wild. I uh, highly recommend you get something that is weapon finessable and something that is heavily represented in the game. Dagger being a fine example. And some people will be like, well, why can't we go and grab something that does more damage like the short sword? You can do that. There's not very many in the game. There's a really good one in the game. But the rest, there's like two named ones. One really good one, one that's crap. And then the rest are just like plus four, plus three, plus five. Some that do shocking damage, some that are keen, some that are, you know, they're just generic magic weapons. Daggers, on the other hand, since you're going to be dual fisting that shit, there's a shit ton of them. Really good ones that you can find that up your armor. Ones that make you immune to stuff. One that gives you a reach that's higher than any uh, normal melee reach weapon. Or at least equal to the highest normal melee reach weapon. So this is really, really powerful for you. Allows you to reach farther, uh, hit more targets. Uh, so again, uh, when people move out of your uh, area of influence, for example, when they're trying to reposition themselves, they may you know, stutter step out of the way, try to reposition themselves, and you get attack of opportunity and get with their ass for free. Kind of nice. So I do like the dagger. And we want to take this now. The other stuff that I'm, I'm going to show you here first, we're coming back to this, is uh, I want to see what else is available to us. There's a really good um, Premier Savant is a fine example. Knowledge Arcana, Knowledge World, remember our... Um, Intelligence and our charisma is pretty much locked where it's going to be from this point forward. We'll probably put all five points into dexterity, get it up to a 24, have a nice, nice armor for your character. You don't have to go that route. You can put one point in here just to round it up and put four in intelligence or two and two, however you want to do. But the point is, is these are about the same. So doing this is not the best idea ever. I'll get like another point out of it. Ring a ding ding. But it's a staple, something that we usually do. And there's other stuff that might be in here that is of value. Again, something that you should totally tease apart and look at, you know, like a, a Anything that's a bonus to will saves, for example, would be a boon to this character. Uh, magic trait, on the other hand. Uh, now that we have Pragmatic Activator, we've got Dangerously Curious. Uh, and again, we're looking for, I'm sorry, we're looking for Persuasion. 
and mobility. So we're looking to unlock those if at all possible. Uh, so let's see. Nothing in here falls under that category. Race-wise, you are a halfling. So well-informed. Here you go. Persuasion is a class skill for you. Click, click, unlock. You know, like clicking that thing literally not only gives you a plus one to it, it gives you the green check mark next to it as well. Uh, freed slave. Knowledge world, no. Freedom fighter. Here's mobility and a class skill for you. Again, so something else we could have done. Either of those would be good choices. We'll probably grab that later to unlock them. And again, it's, it's not that it's not helpful now. Definitely helpful now, but it's not really needed. Plus seven is a solid upgrade for your character. And again, you're sure-footed. That's why it's at plus seven. You're a, a mobile halfling. Um, so again, having those will come in handy. Regional traits. Uh, there is a weird one I want to show you. The balanced education. Look at this weird ass thing. What this one does, balanced education. It pairs strength with intelligence, dex with wisdom, con with charisma. Now, why do we pair those? Just because they say to. What does this mean? Normally, if it's an intelligence-based skill check, like knowledge arcana, apparently being super strong means you can, can outwit it. You can be <laughs> smarter because you're stronger. Don't fucking ask. I have no idea how this makes sense. But that means in reverse as well. For athletics checks, which is strength-based skill, you could use your intelligence instead. And again, that's what you would do. You'd pick it here. So you'd say, use my intelligence stat instead of my strength stat for athletics check, which means, for example, let me find it. Uh, mobility, knowledge, world, knowledge. Athletics right here. Use uh, use intelligence for calculating athletics. So again, instead of your strength, which is crap right now, and your intelligence, which is the 16, we could start dipping into this, and instead of it going up like a lame amount, it would actually go up a decent amount because of this plus three. This not amazing to me, and plus it feels weird. Um, con for charisma, Again, how to being extra resilient and physical increase your use magic device skill. That makes no sense to me. And again, we're not a con person. I'm just saying that if you had a high con stat, that would be how, how you could have done that. Or same with persuasion. How, how does being, well, maybe for intimidation, I suppose. Your ex extra fortitude or your extra tough. And as such, your intimidation would be better. But how is it that you can smooch people better just because you're a big tough guy? That seems to make no sense. Same with dexterity for wisdom. You know, how is being, you know, extremely flexible suddenly mean that I can spot things out, you know, 100 miles away with my massive perception buff from being dexterous? What? Again, it seems weird, but it is here. I wanted to point it out to you guys. Uh, and then um, I saw it. Where was it? Give me a moment. Is it race? Oh, yeah, yeah. The, the, uh, I keep pointing this out. I wanted to point it out again for another good reason. If you get this at level one, you get this for free. Uh, just like the dagger that I'm about to give myself. Um, this is a really nice upgrade for your character. So again, you really have the ability now to um, get these two magic rings. A bless ring, which you can find early in the game anyway, so it's not that big of a deal. But for level one, to they hand it to you, it's kind of sweet. And the arcane missile ring, which is again my favorite. You only use uh, cast uh, magic missile three times a day, or per rest, but it shoots two missiles at a whack. And so it's a minimum of guaranteed four damage, unless of course they have a shield spell up, or spell pen. Or, sorry, spell resistance is an issue, but this is still nice. And again, Grandma was a, a mystic caster type, and you basically inherited this from her will, was the idea here, which is, is kind of cool. And I kind of dig that they give you that option. Uh, regional, we talked about you. Social, uh, we should point out that uh, one of my favorites in here is adopted. Uh, and you want to grab ever wary tiefling, especially on a deck space build where you're trying to not get caught flat foot, especially on a solo build like this. If it's a dex based build and you're using that dex to make sure you have high high armor and that's what's basically keeping your ass alive then this is amazing for you on that surprise round uh, before you have your first action in combat so even on a not surprise round so if you just happen to roll bad initiative roll or they just roll amazing and they get to attack you before you have a chance to act you are still flat-footed it doesn't even have to be a surprise round because they are acting before you you are flat-footed this does not take away the flat-footedness it does give you half of your dexterity bonus back for defending against that son of a bitch, though. So if you have, like, let's say, a dex of 10, a plus 10 modifier, it goes down to zero if you're flat-footed. But with this, it would go down to five. And that's not amazing, but I think we can all agree that plus five is way better than plus zero. So this is nice, uh, a very nice upgrade. The downside of this is if we take this, uh, I want you to see... Uh, let's just, uh, take away the mutant for a time being. Uh, we got the master... Notice that our race trait is now locked. Okay, and that's fine. I'm, I'm actually fine with that, but no, that means that we cannot take a race trait, and there was some good stuff in the race trait. So again, kind of a bummer. So if you are uh, gonna use this, 
make sure to grab this first, otherwise you will lock yourself out of being able to pick it. And that straight up sucks. We're not doing that though. Uh, what we're gonna grab? We said we were gonna get um, treat. family heirloom, the daggers. Okay, so we have daggers as a family trait. Uh, we're noble born, so we get our extra mutagen. Uh, Blade of Society, so we get the extra sneak attack damage, and of course we have the f uh, physique uh, drawback, so that we were cursed with the right deity. That means that we are cursed uh, for being undead. So now we have only one feat to pick uh, because again we are not human so we only get the one but this mod also again affords us the ability to grab penalties so we can still take spell vulnerability abjuration is my favorite oh you're susceptible to cold just make yourself immune to cold with spells uh, mummification someone has reported back the mummification is broken it doesn't make you immune to cold and it could be because of this is conflicting with it so be careful on that uh, but I know that if I give myself a piece of magic gear that makes me immune to cold, and then I try to hurt myself with cold spells, I am immune. So it can work, just so we're clear. But mummification clearly doesn't, so we're probably not going to go that route today. Um, but know that uh, spell vulnerability, abjuration, again, there's very few abjuration spells that you save against, so this is a, a non-issue really. And the uh, weakness to cold just means that you're going to take, I think, 50% more damage to cold attacks. Again, which you can resist. Uh, from here, uh, we're going to go weapon finesse because, doy, you really want to make sure that you're uh, two weapon fighting uh, or at least dagger wielding with your full dexterity. From here, you may say, well, go grab yourself Piranha Strike. And again, I probably will grab this eventually. Power attack is still an option for you, uh, but there's no need. If you're using daggers and you're always using daggers, Piranha Strike is good enough. There is no wielding a dagger two handed, as far as I know. Uh, it's too small, and again, you're going to have one in each hand as your best bet anyway. Why, why get 50% more strength or dex damage uh, by wielding a dagger with power attack versus wielding two daggers, one in each hand, and getting sneak attack love and all kinds of damage for all those other attacks. So Piranha Strike is probably a go-to. Um, notice, though, there's going to be a lot of new feats here. And so it may take me a little bit longer to go through some of these things because I will take my time to make sure I'm not missing out on a really cool mechanic. For instance, one that just caught my eye. Uh, dodge is an amazing ability, but look at Artful Dodge. I'm not picking it, I'm just showing it to you. Uh, intelligence 13 minimum, watch this. Basically, if you're threatening one opponent only, uh, again, if you're the only character threatening an opponent, which means you're going solo, which is perfect for this build, you get a plus one dodge against that opponent. Now, I would assume that this also means that uh, he is, or they, I should say, is the only person threatening you in reverse. So if two guys are jumping you, you might not get this dodge. Just be real clear. I don't know that, but that could be an issue. But definitely, if you're going solo, this is perfect for you. And if you're an intelligence-based person that's not dex-based, remember I said strength and intelligence have a lot of really cool feats? This is one of them. The Artful Dodge feat acts as dodge for all purposes of satisfying the requirement for meeting like you need dodge. Again, crane style, crane wing, crane repost. You have to have improved unarmed strikes as well as dodge unlocked to pick those feats, as well as a certain bab or monk level. So, if I wanted to go that route, I could make a solid character that's not a dex-based character that still gets dodge, and it's not a monk. That's awesome. Keep reading. You can use intelligence rather than dexterity for uh, feats that have a minimum dexterity prerequisite. Again, our two-weapon fighting. Remember what we said there. You have the ability to free get choppity choppity based on the fact that you had a dexterity of 15, 17, or 19 for two-weapon fighting, improved two-weapon fighting, or greater two-weapon fighting. Now, if you just have a de or intelligence that's 15, 17, or 19 or higher, then you can still unlock all those things. Still two-weapon fighting with a strength-based character after you pick this as long as you're a strength and intelligence-based character. That's not bad. And again, that means I don't have to grab the weird, uh, prodigious two-weapon fighter feat where you have a high strength stat. And again, this unlocks even more because it didn't say just two-weapon fighting feats. It says any dexterity requirement and any dodge requirement covered. Boom, you're going to get dodged anyway, so grab this one. But again, we have the uh, uh, high dexterity. We're going to have even higher dexterity. So again, I'm just pointing out that there are options out there. This is not what I'm going with. I think I'll just take that for my strike, because why the hell not? You know what? Actually, I take that back. Let's do additional traits now. Let's get it out of the way. Uh, we're going to take an emotional drawback called Envy. Uh, it is a penalty to your concentration checks, which do not matter if you pre-buff up in com uh, before combat, because there's no concentration check then. And if you have enough money on hand, it's not an issue. So we're going to take that one. Now watch this. Uh, well, actually, first, let me make sure there's not something else in here. There's one of these things that has a really good buff to damage. 
<laughs> Maybe the physique ones we're probably missing out on it already. Is it cruel? Yeah, plus one damage roll against flank targets, but that's not you, because you can't flank anybody if you're running solo. So again, we're going to keep with the Envy. Okay? Uh, from there, though, we got three more traits, so let's grab the traits we wanted. So let's jump to the... Um, was it regional? No. Social. Adopted. Everywhere. Might as well get it right off the bat. Level one, you're going to have that dodge, uh, or the, the dex uh, bonus. High, 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 and even if they catch you flat-footed, at least you get something. And notice again that race, like I said, disappears for us when we do that. Uh, then from here, um, regional trait. We can make ourselves faster. Wanderlust, one of my favorites, turns out, especially for like a halfling gnome dwarf character that have a speed of 20 anyway. Now you can run it at 30, just by default. That's not bad. That's, that's actually really helpful. Well, here's the one I think I was looking for. Yeah, with daggers. See this? Uh, benefit, you get a plus one trait bonus on damage rolls with a dagger, plus one uh, bonus on swim. And you start with a dagger, blah, blah, blah. But the swim is athletics. So see this part down here? This is how they implemented it in the game. You get a plus one on athletics checks, and athletics is always a class skill for you. So again, you get a green check mark next to athletics now. And this is not amazing, but if you want to do all the skill checks yourself, this is at least helpful. Um, and that could be kind of cool, because that literally unlocks a lot of potential for your character. Uh, again, skill-wise, you just have to take something away like here and go bam, like that. See that? And it's even higher than you think, because again, you are sure-footed. Remember, you are a... Halfling. So athletics and mobility is kind of a thing for you. And not only that, but I'm going to take this away just to show you something stealth. While still not um, green check marked, it is actually better than you think because of size. You're a teeny tiny person, so it's harder for them to spot your ass. So again, you're getting a bonus to being a little sneak thief biatch if you wanted to go that route. I'm just saying these are options. Um, I think I'll take this. I think I really do like that idea because I, I love the idea of doing extra damage. And I have yet to test to make sure that does work. We are using daggers all the time, especially to weapon fighting, and a plus one damage is a plus one damage. I will totally take that shit. Uh, from here, we have only one more to pick. Uh, is it magic? Maybe. Nothing in here that smacks my fancy. Pragmatic activator is not as good as uh, dangerously curious. It's plus one either way you go, and, and we wouldn't want to use our intelligence modifier because we're not making our intelligence better than our charisma. See that? So this would be useless compared to this one. If our intelligence was the 18, the charisma was the 16, this would be the way to go, I suppose. But I don't even care about that. So let's look at faith. Um, again, we could go planar savant. Again, it doesn't really do as much good. Uh, we have a terrible wisdom, so don't do wisdom of the flesh. God of the great beyond, what do you do? Knowledge world, could care less. Sacred conduit, we don't do that. Well, wait. Read that again. What does that say? Whenever you use healing energy, you gain plus one bonus to its save DC versus undead. So if you tried, we're not doing it in this build, but you could have. Uh, you have heal spells. Remember, you have the ability to uh, cure light wounds, cure moderate, etc. and so forth as part of your spell book. You can only use them on yourself currently. If you unlock infusion, which is a, a uh, uh, discovery down here, which we will do, you could literally use those spells to now attack. So those heal spells can attack undead. They have a DC check on that. The DC check is like, I want to say, a will save for them. So, literally, you have a plus one to the DC of all your touch spells for or your heal spells against undead. If you wanted to go that route. It's a little weird. I wouldn't think that that'd be something you'd care about, but it's it's worth mentioning. It is not garbage. It's just not great. This one should work. Uh, and the downside of Lessons of Faith is they give you choices. I'll read this tooltip. It tells you more about that, but I'm still not a fan. It's, it's a weird and fiddly. I'm looking for something that's right there. Bonus to will saves. Indomitable faith. Notice we could also have done fates favored. Uh, whenever you're in the effect of a luck bonus, you get a plus one. And um, I think you may have luck skills for being a halfling. That's a racial bonus. It says luck, but it's not. Halfling luck, what's this? That's not a racial bonus. Damn it. Okay, so yeah, this, that's not helping us in any real way there. So uh, like I said, I do like the indomitable faith for that reason, the plus one will save. And again, needed for someone that has a crappy will save. If you don't see it yet, it'll, it'll kick in once we actually finish the leveling of character up. But that's cool, and I think that's a good spread. Uh, and again, as far as skills, just to show you what we've unlocked, we didn't unlock mobility, but we did unlock athletics. Uh, we do have a, a really nice... Um, did I unlock anything else just to prove it to myself? We do have a nice spread of stuff that we can invest in, and with even us not getting a whole lot in mobility with that nice green check mark, which we're missing, um, we still get a bonus thanks to being a halfling and having a high dexterity. So we're doing fine, so don't feel too bad for us. Uh, abilities are done. Spells now. 
Let's see, is there anything new in this list? Long arm. Oh, there we go, baby. I didn't even need to go daggers now. Uh, this is an amazing spell. Uh, let's grab it just so I can explain this to you. What this does is your arms, you won't see it, but your arms will grow longer and as such you can reach farther with your uh, melee attacks. Uh, so normal, normal melee attacks are a two foot range. Like I said, there is a magic dagger out there that cheats the system. Uh, I, forget, I think it's called the Deceiver. And it's uh, when it's equipped in your little thingies, uh, it has a reach of plus five feet longer. So instead of two feet, you're now at seven. That's a really good range. But it, it goes one step further. Any of your melee attacks, so if you have two weapon fighting, you got the Deceiver in one hand and you got something else in the other, gets another five feet to it. So I'm assuming that you would have a dagger and a dagger. One would be two feet, one would be seven. No, they're both at seven now. Same with, I assume, your touch attacks. We haven't tested this yet, but we could do that against, the, say, Undead to see if we could reach them farther so long as we have the Deceiver in our hands. But we don't even have to have the Deceiver now. Now we can just use Longer, which means that this build doesn't have to be Daggers anymore. It could have been Rapier. Uh, up to you. Uh, so, so Weapon Finessable. The downside on that is, is you can't do uh, Rapier, Rapier. You do like Rapier, Dagger, Rapier, Short Sword, something with a light weapon category. Or, again, take that feat that we talked about for Strength, where you prodigious two-weapon fight or whatever the hell it's called, so that you can use a rapier in both hands and not be at the penalty. Up to you, but that would be a strength-based build instead of a dex-based build. And if you're going solo, dex is still one of the best categories to go with. Uh, but this is amazing, and I wonder if this will stack with the dagger. I doubt it, but if it did, oh, Jesus Christ. You have a range of like 12 feet <laughs> for melee. You can imagine the size of the fucking circle around your character with that. That's going to be fun. Uh, I want to take the cure spells because, again, if you're running solo, you're the only one healing yourself. Uh, I love reduced person. Oh, 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 I don't like reduced person. You are undead. You can't use large person or reduced person on yourself. Okay, let's be real clear on this. Let's grab a fire belly. Um, and you are susceptible to fire, so this will give you a little bit of protection. Let's make sure we run fast. Love my shield spell, and I totally want to have true strike. And honestly, of the spells that are left, the only one you care about, quite frankly, is detect secret doors still. And that's it. Stonefish you won't use because you're using daggers, and it's better than if you try to punch people in the snoot. I will say that Stone Fist is kind of weird. When you do these unarmed strikes with Stone Fist, uh, first what happens is, even at level 1, if you only get one attack normally with your main hand, you cast a spell on yourself and now you get two attacks, one for each fist. Uh, so you get two attacks. That's awesome, right? Why wouldn't you want that? So also, you know, the, the attacks become touch attacks. So it's not an unarmed strike like it says. It literally is you smack, smack. Smack, smack. And it's literally touch attacks. So it's an amazing way to fuck over bad guys. And you'd be like, why isn't this awesome? Why wouldn't you want this? And again, sure, it's true. But you can't really buff it beyond that. I mean, you got your sneak attack love, which of course is appreciated, and that's about all you get. So it's not fist attacks like normal, like you're thinking with unarmed strikes, so you don't get to like wear like a necklace and all that cool shit and get a buff to your swing because of that. So you're really hampered by this. This is a gimmick. It can be implemented very usefully, but I don't think on this build it's something to care. We'll get them all. Don't worry about that. Again, you grab every spell that you can scribe. But know that long arm is making me really, really happy right now. Um... Uh, uh, Witch Queen. Welcome. All I see is, is blackness. She's cheery, isn't she, folks? Uh, are we neutral or are we going to be chaotic evil bitch? Maybe we're Lex Luthor lawful evil. Who knows? Uh, let's just go true neutral because I know there's some really neutral gear. I'll I'll take take the bait. Bait. Oh, wait. No, actually, I take that back. I want to show you something that requires you to be evil. Quick, quick, quick. I'll show you. Trust me when I say it's weird. Um, it's not something we'll use in this build, but it's something that I want to show you because it really is useful to have on certain builds. Uh, specifically, if you want like a strength-based monk build, a lawful evil monk can reap unholy hell with some certain tricks. Um, anyway, here we are, Tanaver Steps. Time. Moving in. And notice that we have our... Two mutagens. Notice, of course, we have multiple uses. You have to decide which one you're using. So we have con, dex, and strength. And usually I put them in order. And usually I put them in order over here. So it's strength, dex, con. So I don't have to think about it. I know which one I'm grabbing. It's going to be the dex one. Uh, and the fact that we have two uses of it is awesome. Notice that this mod has added new utilities. So we have the ability to aid another, which we do not have because we don't have others. That might work if you have, like, pets summoned. Uh, but I uh, use skill, uh, heal skill, excuse me, you got treat affliction still, but now instead of that, you also have treat deadly wounds, so you can use that, you have a high enough uh, lore religion, that's considered the healers of the party, so to speak, um, so you have a, a really good ability uh, there to um, 
heal a teammate, uh, which you didn't normally have. Of course, we're going to be two up and fighting our melee weapons. We'll have charge, and we'll have coup de grace, and we'll have fighting defensively down here. Now, they have you stuck with a crossbow, right? Yeah. So what we do is, like so. This is the magic one they give you to begin with for family heirloom. Cold iron dagger, plus one. Notice that you got a really nice swing with this thing already. Dex of plus four, size, bonus, family heirloom for any dagger you wield is going to have another plus one on it. And then this is a magic dagger, so that's what this plus one's about. So we're at a solid plus seven already. Now notice what happens when we double fist it. We're at a minus, uh, or plus three and a minus two. This is bad. Now notice again it's a massive penalty because again that's because we do not have two weapon fighting. The moment you get two weapon fighting, you should probably switch over to this. Now I'm not saying we're going to grab that at level two. But you're probably going to get it at level 3 on up. And there's so many good ways for you to buff your character. Again, this plus 7 looks nice now, right? Well, when you fight, you're not just fighting like that. You're probably fighting like this. You're giving yourself your dex buff. And now look at You're up to a solid plus 9. And again, we could totally switch to this. But plus 5 and plus 0 still sucks. So, until you get 2 weapon fighting, do not 2 weapon fight is my advice to you. It's not worth it. You miss more often than you can. And again, you're not getting enough sneak attack love to make that worth your damn. But... A plus nine they can sneak attack now for 10 minutes out of whack because that's how long this buff lasts you right now. That's a solid fuck you to the beginning of the game. So already at level one, you have uber armor. Got a nice plus six up here. Look at the fact you get studded leather. You can only get plus five max. So we're not even getting our full. So if you sell this and get yourself leather, it's probably going to get you back up to the plus six. This will go up a little bit, like one more point. And that's not amazing, I'll grant you. But again, we're going to pump five points into dexterity before the end of this build. This will finish here at a 28, and it'll be better than that, because our mutagen's going to get better. But even if we just talk about right now, add 5 points to this at 28, that means we're going to increase this another 3 points. This will be a solid plus 9 to your swing, to your armor, to your reflexes. Again, a solid, solid character. And again, you're undead. The more charisma you have from gear, every level you're going to get another 4 HP extra. So on level 20 character... By default, with this charisma that you have right now, it's the, you're going to count another 80 HP over here. It's going to come from the fact that your charisma is 18. And we can make it reasonably higher. So again, you're going to be solid, solid too. So let's actually force level your character up. How we do that? Character creation. Party XP, set it to 3, 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 zeros in a row, and then click the name of your character. Hear that noise, and you know that you're in level 20. Now. Okay? That's all you got to do. So here we are at level 20. Let's force level you up. Again, keep going through the section this. Uh, poison resistance, eventually be immune to poison, but you're immune to poison right now. You are undead, so this is garbage. This is completely useless for you, but know that it is there for any other build that you're doing. Um, it's these uh, medical discoveries that's gonna be your bread and butter here. And again, skill ranks every time. We got more than enough HP. 20 more would be nice, sure, but I'd rather have the skills, especially if you're running solo, because you really need these skills now. So trickery needs to be going up. Mobility, we're going to take it to at least three. Uh, and I'm going to always make sure perception goes up. And again, I do want to unlock use magic device. From there, the question is, is which of these three or four, even for that matter, do you really want to focus on? Do you want to just unlock everything? There is nothing wrong with doing that. So like literally, we could totally do like this right now and not feel horrible. Yeah, trickery is a little behind the curve, but you'll be level three before you know it. So again, you can get that back up. Same with perception. So I'm not too worried. But the question is, is this worth it? I mean, you're looking at a plus two here. This is garbage. This is a minus one. Yeah, you can use lower religion now, but big deal. You're at a minus one. These are bad ideas. Uh, so I really am not a fan of that. Now, the question is, for these two, both or one? Do you want to double up on something? Do you want to be spreading it thin? Do you want to focus on one more than another? Again, that's on you. I can't tell you what to do there. But I will decide after we get mobility to three. Because like I said, once it gets to three, we're probably not touching that one anymore. All right, uh, notice we got even new discoveries. Oh my god, this is gonna be so cool. Okay, so let's take a, sl a slow look at this, make sure they're not something new that I'm missing out on. You know, my favorite enhanced potion is gonna be something we're gonna get for sure. Combat tricks, I wonder if they've made it now where it's officially only one pick because that's the way it should be. Vanilla version, you can only get this once in the vanilla version of the pen and paper game, I should say. Uh, but this is different for us now, so again, we'll get this. We're going to get it when it matters. We're not going to grab it right now. A bleeding attack was something new. 
A rogue with this ability can cause living opponents to bleed by hitting them with a sneak attack. This attack causes the target to take one additional point of damage each round. For each die of the rogue sneak attack, 46 plus, equals 4 points of bleed. Jesus Christ. Bleeding characters take an amount of damage every round at the start of their turns. The bleeding can be stopped by a successful heal check, which they don't do in this game, or the application of any effect that heals hit point damage, which they do sometimes in this game. Uh, bleed damage from this ability does not stack with itself. That's important. Bleed damage bypasses any damage reduction the creature might possess. Ooh, I'm not, I like that. That sounds like we should play with that, son. All right. Oh, and then here, uh, detect secret door. Sure, why not? Boom. That's going to be fun. That's totally new. Uh, skill rank. Sounds great. Uh, perception. Trickery. Mobility is officially done. Uh, again, do you want to go in on Arcana? It's not the worst idea ever, but remember, if you're going solo, you're the only one doing these checks. So what matters to you? Skinning animals? That's Lord Nature. And notice if you, you right-click this here, it gives you like a pop-up of all the things it's used for. So for hunting, identifying monsters. But if you get if you're running solo, you're not hunting for food. You're carrying food with you in a pack. Your, uh, what do you call it, the uh, rations. One ration per rest. You're solo, so you only need like two, three rations. You got three days worth of rest available, buddy. So you don't need to do any of that. What you do need, on the other hand, is the stealth so that people don't see you while you're camping. So if you're on stealth duty, then basically you, you cover up the camp really, really well. So being really good at stealth means that you literally aren't jumped. You can't prepare food in the middle of the night or anything like that because you're not going to be the cook. So you might as well be the stealther. You don't need to do um, guard duty because, again, there's only one of you. You can't do guard duty for both positions. So, again, what are you going to do? Stealth is the obvious answer for a solo run. So stealth is important. Not so important you need to go crazy on this shit. You can give yourself a, a, a piece of gear, like a cloak. By the time you get to Chapter 2, you can buy a cloak from your vendor that will give you, like, a plus 5 or plus 10 to your stealth. I forget which. Probably plus 10. And if you put that cloak on just before you camp, which would be, of course, something you need to train yourself to do. You use that one ration, which is automatic. You just set rations to be used, so there's no hunting. There's no scouting for food. There's no cooking the food. There's no uh, setting up the uh, uh, sh uh, guard duty shifts. It's just you stealthing and you eating your ration. And you will, nine times out of ten, pass it where you never get jumped in the middle of the night. It's fucking awesome. So literally, you just take a nap, get all your spells back, get your mutants back, and you go back to camp uh, to fighting like normal, or, or campaigning. And that's cool, but you definitely want to unlock it. Uh, at the very minimum, we're going to unlock it. So again, you probably don't need all of these things. I don't mind double dipping a little. Because again, you are going to be reasonably smart. We will push that a little higher with gear. So these numbers where they look kind of crappy right now, and surely they are. Uh, at the very least, they're not horrible. So I don't mind double dipping here. These ones are a bad idea because again, we've kind of fudged our wisdom up a little bit there. But you do also, remember, want to have some persuasion. you got a kingdom to run. you got people that are turning to you for questions and answers. So this is going to get to unlock, too. So you can see we're already getting really thin here for how we're spreading stuff around. The question is, is when do you need it? I wouldn't worry about persuasion until you probably get to level 5. Especially if you're soloing. I wouldn't worry about it until you get to chapter 2. Let's just say it that way. Um, so if that's the case, then I'm going to go like that. Okay. All right, from here, uh, do we want that Piranha Strike now? There's extra damage to be had. Nothing wrong with that as a choice. Notice that we also have um, not picked up, say, Weapon Focus yet. So we can get uh, up here, yeah, Weapon Focus in our daggers. And you may say, well, I got a plus one to our swing with the daggers thanks to Family Heirloom. But Weapon Focus daggers unlocks an another plus as well as gives us other feats that we might be able to dip into. So it's worth grabbing. I'm not saying grab it now. I'm just saying it is an option. We could go right now and grab that two-weapon fighting. It's waiting for us right here. Totally can do. I can get Accomplished Sneak Attacker. And if you're going to get Accomplished Sneak Attacker, by the way, you don't need it for this build. But if you are going to get it, grab it by level 5. You will not notice it past level 5. It's going to be garbage. But 1d6 is 1d6 extra. But again, remember, we're at 10d6 by the end. 11d6 plus 11, thanks to our trait. And then 5d6 plus 5 more we can add on top of that with a spell. So 16d6. This would mean it's 17d6 plus 17. Ring and ding ding. It's not that much better. It's nice. Don't get me wrong. It's clearly on the plus side. It's just one of those where you will. it's a drop in the bucket at the end. At the beginning, on the other hand, where it's like 1, 2, 3, 4, D6 right now, plus 4 damage. You would notice it. You would definitely notice that. But again, it requires you to set up sneak attack. How can you do that? Well, you would use vanish potions, invisibility potions, greater invisibility potions, and of course spells that you would prepare for yourself. They're the same type of thing. Use wands of vanish 
greater than viz and viz that's going to be your bread and butter for the longest time you need to set yourself up sneak attack that's probably how you're going to do it the best there's other ways that we can do it but this is probably going to be the easiest way for you to do it so if you want that do that thing i'm not telling you to do it i'm just saying that you're going to do it you're going to do it here or here and that's the probably the, or uh, maybe even down here it's a possibility but it's not worth it in my book two weapon fighting on the other hand taking 3d6 of sneak attack damage remember we got one we got two remember we've unlocked our trade at this point so now we're at 3d6 plus three and doing that for two weapons pop pop now we're at two attacks in a combat round baby choppity choppity and again not bad but i still maintain you'd probably rather have that weapon focused now for dagger get that bonus to your swing now and then start taking your penalties after and this is not that uh, early in the game this is really like you beat uh, uh, the tutorial you're at level two uh, or at least you will be shortly by the time you get to old legs uh, you beat the guys at old legs you're definitely level two by the time you're level three you've probably fought tartuccio off maybe a little after that and then you're level three bam done it is not that hard to get to level three so this is a hop skip and a jump level four it's a little bit longer but once you're level three you can probably successfully start to solo this game so again if you can kick the team to the curb at back at old legs place by that point and then just go start soloing. You'll get to four and five and six, seven. You'll be level eight before the end of the chapter one. If you do as much in that area as you can. And I recommend you doing so. Because it really makes the game trivial at that point. Uh, from here, let's just grab our... Uh, let's fish or whatnot. Going. Now. What I did do last time. Well, first, let's unlock that. That's extra uh, reflexes extra armor again if you have the better kind of armor on that's nice for you uh got more perception mobility's done let's get trickery up we don't have to take trickery crazy i'd probably take it up to where you see yourself getting to a solid with the dexterity you have a solid plus 15 and then stop for the time being and start leveling up stuff that you do care about like say these guys for instance uh, or athletics remember you don't have a lot of strength so every point you can put in here makes it a little bit better uh, but again, on you. Uh, I would probably do that. That I'll unlock Persuasion just to unlock it, and I'll dump another one into Athletics just to make sure we're not falling too far behind on that one. Here, now, notice some stuff. Uh, and I should have uh, told you that you should not have put the, the Constitution Cognitive on your list, because remember, you don't have a con stat, so we should actually take that off there. Uh, but Infusion is one of my favorites because it allows you to cast spells on your team, but you don't have a team. That doesn't mean you don't want this. We'll probably grab it, if we grab it at all, it'll be at the very end. But if you're running solo, that can be probably skipped. But this, on the other hand, is a maze balls. Fast stealth is a maze ball, especially for you being a sneak attacker. Because, again, being all sneaky, stealthy and shit, and still being able to move at your normal human speed, or halfling speed, whatever, is not bad. You can get the behind guys real quickly before they notice you, and then the, the jig is up. So if you sneak behind that motherfucker super zippy fast while, and then stab, stab, and then the fight's on like Donkey Kong, that's your sneak attack round. Bam! First guy drops like a stone. Pretty nice. Uh, I do like Enhanced Potion. I do like Extend Potion. Of these two, if I had to pick, it's always Enhanced Potion. Um, preserve Organs. Again, immune to 25%, uh, I should say. Immune to sneak attack and crit attacks. That can go all the way up to 50 and 75% if you grab it two more times. Totally worth. Uh, I would recommend getting it at least once, just because. A 25% chance to ignore being critted. You may not never notice it. And that's the, the cool part of these things, is a lot of these buffs... Unless you're constantly monitoring your uh, your uh, combat log, you won't even notice that you're not being critted or sneak attacked most of the time. And that's kind of cool, because it's one of those where it's, it's like you set it and forget it. You don't have to think about it. You just know that it's working, and it works as intended. Uh, from there, though, um, uh, combat trick. Again, with our other choice here. And again, notice something here. Here's a fencing grace. With a dagger, we can fencing grace. See that? Really nice, really useful. Notice something, though. Um, when moving your chosen weapon, in our case a dagger, uh, one-handed, you can add your dex modifier instead of your strength modifier to that weapon's damage. That's what this gives you. This keeps you from having to find agile daggers or agile weapons, to say it that way. Um, and that's nice, because there, while there are agile daggers out there, you're not going to have a bunch of them, and it's going to be hard for you to find them, and you don't want to wait to find them to get that extra damage. Remember, your dex is high, high, high. Why not get that plus five damage back? That's some powerful fucking attacks now. Even when you're not sneak attacking, because remember, you can't guarantee sneak attacks, some guys are immune to sneak attacks. So then you're going to be chopping them at 1d4, 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 maybe plus 1, plus 2 from your bonuses because it's a magic weapon or some shit. Eh, you'll do it. It just sucks. So this gets you some damage back, like you have strength, even though you don't. 
That's not bad, but keep reading. You do not gain this benefit when uh, with two weapons or using flurry of blows, or any time another hand is otherwise occupied. So you don't get to like sword and board it. Be real clear on this shit. So this does not work if we're two weapon fighting. That does not mean you don't want it. If you want it, I'm not saying you will, but if you want it, grab it. Use it for when you when you set up your build. Remember, you have four we weapon category slots. So you have weapon choice one, weapon choice two, weapon choice three, and four. Three of them should probably be at least two weapon fighting, where you got dagger and dagger, your favorite two combos, however they, they fit in. This two, and then these two, and then these two. So you switch depending on the type of fight that you're in. The first one can be just your best one dagger, so your one weapon fighting, so that you still are getting the benefit of this. Right? So if you really just need it, like the sneak attacks aren't working and, and you're choppy, 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 but six attacks in a round is not enough to kill these guys because it's doing 1d4 plus 2 damage per hit. That's bullshit. Switch back to one-handed, go back to only three attacks, but now it's 1d4 plus 7, 8, 9 because your dex is high, high, high. You see the appeal here? But on that note, I'm not going to grab it because, again, if that's the case, then I just make sure to find that agile dagger. There's like three or four at least in the game. And one of those Agile Daggers guaranteed is going to be in my one hand. And my other hand will be empty. And that will be how I do this. So I don't need this feat. I just wanted to point that out. That it is an option. You do not have to take that option. What am I going to take? I think it's time to get two weapon fighting, don't you? You're at a solid plus three to your swing right now. Because your BAB is going zero, plus one, plus two, plus three. Plus three, plus four, plus five, plus six. Plus six, plus seven, plus eight, plus nine. By the time you're done, it'll be solid plus fifteen. So... You're at a solid, like I said, plus three. Then you got weapon focus, that's another one, that's four. Then you got skill and daggers, that's plus five. Plus it's a magic dagger, at least one of them in your hands, where you had a plus six for that one dagger. Then you have your dexterity is fucking high, and you're a weapon finesse, so you're at a, what, a five or more. So we're already at swinging at like a solid plus uh, 11 right now on your main hand. If we switch to two weapon fighting, yes, it goes down two and two, but you're getting two attacks. Chop, chop. Totally worth it to go down to a nine to get two attacks, in my opinion. So two-weapon fighting is our go-to right now. Keep going. Uh, notice here, again, another way we can buff our character. Well, let's look at our spells. Let's hide the other levels. I just want to look at the new ones. Notice we have Vine Strike, a new spell. Uh, I'm not a fan of this one, but basically this is a, 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 a buff you put on yourself. It looks like the spells in effect. One of your natural attacks or unarmed strikes. Oh, so it's not even something we care about. We're not punching like that. We're not clawing. Um... So we can pass on that one. Fiery Runes, on the other hand, this is one of your few evocation spells that snuck through somehow. Uh, pretty weird, but interesting. This is a, a weird one in that it buffs your weapon, your main hand, or an off hand. You get to choose, I think. Point is, it literally gives you a buff to damage for the weapon. So it still affects you, even though, remember, even though it says this, remember all your spells right now without infusion are personal effect. So if you see something that's like, it will attack the bad guy. No, it doesn't. Like this one here. That is not a good spell for you, I don't think. Because it literally centers it. Oh, wait. No, this centers on the caster. This might be okay. That'd be worth testing out without infusion to see if that works. Because that would be a damaging spell for you. Not an amazing one, I'll grant you. But it's still decent. But that could be fun. Uh, anyway, fiery ruin. Back to my point here. Uh, buffing your weapon. Uh, instead of doing fire damage, it doesn't. Uh, what it does is it puts a ruin on your weapon. And... At, any time in this massive duration, you can once and once only discharge the spell and it does this much damage or this much damage if you level it up enough. And that's it. So it's like a one time 5d4 plus 5 on a strike with your dagger. It's cool. I'm not saying don't grab it. I'm just saying that it's not as amazing as you think. It's not like you've turned it into a fire weapon for like every attack. No, it's one attack and done. So this is all you're going to get out of it is one swing of this. Just know that you have to tell it to discharge the spell. And I'll show you how to do that. That's still cool. Uh, Blood Armor is another new one. Uh, this one's actually interesting. The more damage you take, it has to be piercing or slashing. You bleed. And as you bleed, as long as it's five points or more of damage that you take, you get a plus one to your armor class. So you can see how this is going to be appealing for you. It's not going to be fun for you to take damage, but it's going to happen. So why not have that? So that's be something we'll grab. Bark skin will be something we'll grab. Uh, I wanted to point out, even though Blistering Infective is a new spell, I wanted to point out, A, as an old spell, remember you have a, a buff to your swing with Dexterity and so on and so forth. Here's another buff to your swing. And again, Temp HP. All kinds of good stuff that you'll have from this. It's not the best spell ever, but why not use it is my advice to you. And remember, you do not have con, so anything that says buff to your con, ignore it. You're not using it. Okay, let's actually back out of here just real quick because I want to show you. Here's our plus 14 swing right now, one-handed, okay? 
plus 12, plus 11. I say that's worth. And again, part of that is because our dexterity just got buffed. Remember, we, we buffed it up with our mutagen. If the mutagen wasn't on, this would be down two points. So this would be down to a 10, this would be down to a plus 9. That's still solid. But it's still a solid, solid swinging character for two attacks in a combat round at the early level that you are. Uh, just to be clear on what we're talking about here for early levels, we're level 5 right now, I believe. Where's my perception? Four ranks. We're level 4. What? Are we 4? Yeah, we're level 4. Um, yeah, we're not even level 5 yet. Uh, uh, fighters would finish with a bad, for example, of level 20. At level 16, they get 4 attacks. 5 levels early, so at 11, they get 3 attacks. And at 6, they get 2 attacks. So a normal fighter, just to put this into perspective for you here, a normal fighter, if they're not two weapon fighting, of course, just a uh, sword and boardman, let's just say, they wouldn't get their second swing until here. Okay, so you're already at two swings already, and you're two levels ahead of them. And you have way better decks than probably most of them because of your mutagen. So again, you're doing really good for yourself is my point. That's why I say when you're saying, can you solo this? You can. You're not going to be great, but when you can do sneak attack damage, you're going to be amazeballs. Moving on. Let's go, right? Get that perception up. Get that trickery up. Again, we're getting real close to stopping that, so it looks like at plus seven here. This will be 15. We'll stop for the time being. Uh, let's get... Um, if you are soloing, you're still not done with chapter one. If you're not soloing, if you're taking the team, you are. So at this point, I would make sure to invest in persuasion. If you're not soloing. If you're soloing, you can, again, push that back a little bit. So I'll take a little bit and use magic lice. Take a little bit in both of those. Now, again, we're passing on Fencing Grace. Notice that we have no access to improve two weapon fighting yet. Okay, why? Because it requires a VAB, I'm sure, high enough for you to do it. So let's look for it. G, improve two weapon fighting. Yeah, see the base type bonus is six. That's not going to show up to level eight for you, which means we can pick it up here, maybe, in combat trick. Or here, which would be the obvious choice. So that gives us plenty of room is what I'm saying for us to dilly dink around and do whatever the hell we want to do. So what are we going to want to do? Let's grab, uh, do we want that piranha strike now? Why not get that extra damage? Yes, it's a penalty to your swing, but you can afford that shit even with two weapon fighting. And that's still plus two, plus four, plus six damage. That's not bad. That's totally worth having in my opinion. Uh, you are a halfling. If you need extra armor, you do cautious fire. So when you're fighting defensively, remember that's why we add our mobility to three. So we could turn that on if we needed to. But that's a massive penalty to your swing. But it's a decent jump to your armor class. This would give you even more armor. So that would be up to you on that one. Notice that we still haven't even taken dodge. You can totally take that right now. Notice double slice. If your offhand weapon, uh, add your strength bonus to damage rolls made with your offhand weapon. Normally you only get half. See this here? You normally add only half of your strength modifier to your weapon. Well, again, your strength is crap anyway. So why do you care about double slice? Well, remember this thing up here? Remember Fencing Grace, remember how it gives you your, your dex modifier for your main weapon, but if you do two-handed weapons, like I said before, you don't get to get your dex modifier. I'm not saying it gives it back to you. No, what I'm saying is there was another choice. Remember I said you could get yourself Agile Weapons? I believe Agile Weapons work if you have double slice. So if you have an Agile Dagger and you're an Agile Dagger in both hands and you do not have Fencing Grace, both of those daggers, both of those daggers will, should be giving you Dex Modifier fully for your uh, damage output. So let's actually take Double Slice. We'll prove it to ourselves, but it's definitely worth trying at the very least. Uh, I'm going to take myself that uh, Blistering Invective just to see if we can get it to work without Infusion. So it means we're not going to take Infusion on this build. I will tell you where I would put Infusion in uh, if you wanted to slop it back in. Uh, but let's go Perception, let's go Trickery, and let's get that in, uh, Stealth and the Athletics up a little bit. For here, uh, again, we uh, can grab... Ah, look at the combat trick is missing. See it? It's not here. So they did patch it out. So this should be only one and done. So you, you grabbed it here, now you're done. You're not getting it again. So this is going to be a very weird build. It's okay. We're fine with that. We have more than enough to grab what we need up here. But that was nice to grab that for something we did want, the two-weapon fighting. So Enhanced Potion is a highly recommended one for you, and that allows you to literally chug potion, and it's treated as your caster level. So instead of being level 1 healing, you're doing level 5 or 6 or higher healing. 
if it's a, a one minute buff per caster level instead of being one minute like normal, now it's six minutes. You can see the appeal here. Go in here and grab ourselves some, well, let's get blood armor because it's cool. I can show you that one. Keep going, keep going, keep going. Do, 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 do. Now I'm going to be done with trickery for a while. Uh, I'm going to do like that. I'm going to start looking at persuasion because you're probably getting your kingdom real soon if you don't have it by now. All right, now uh, we are missing. We're on a strike. I suggest you get that now. Get that extra damage while you can. Uh, from here, new stuff. Okay, uh, hide other levels. What else is new here? Thorn body. We always had that one. Uh, resinous skin gives you some DR against physical attacks, except for piercing, so slashing and bludgeoning. And what happens is the weapon gets basically stuck in you because of the tar on your skin. And if you use disarm ability, you have a bonus to disarming or grappling targets. So this is basically what this is all telling you down here. I notice it doesn't have any impact on unarmed strikes or natural weapons, so that's not going to do any good either. But I do like the DR. I don't know that we care enough about it to grab that, but that could be fun. Uh, notice that flies in here. I don't know if that was something that we had before, but that's a solid um, bonus to your armor class for melee attacks. So dodge. So that's something worth grabbing. Oh, countless eyes. That's a new one. Sprout eyes all over your body. Now you can't be flanked. That's power. Channel Vigor is another good one. Uh, watch this one. Personal, so again, only you anyway, but it was always going to be that way. Um, you can either have a haste spell on you, but we have haste right here. But wait, there's more. We can either do, either do that, or we can do this one, where you get a bonus to your knowledge skills, both of them, I'm guessing, as well as perception. That's awesome. And a bonus on your ranged attacks, though. You can get a will save bonus, bluff and intimidate checks that will save. That plus six is money. You definitely want that. Plus six to fortitude, and a goddamn truck outside that just won't shut the fuck up. Channel Vigor, though, is an amazing upgrade. I think we'll take that one for sure. I don't know why the hell he's here. They only picks up on Fridays. Ain't no Friday. Let's go, Rick. <laughs> Gonna grab me. Now, it's again, we have enough decks. You can be done now if you want. And go in like Intelligence or Charisma. Get that extra for a dude slash HP. Nothing wrong with that. Well, you can get Wisdom back up to being not garbage or get your strength up to 10. Whatever. Up to you, but if you put all four in here, I think you will appreciate it, and that's what we're going to do. Uh, I'm going to go, oops, uh, here. That one's done for the time being. Let's do this one, this one, and this one. Okay, uh, from here, let's get preserve organs because you're probably getting sneak attack and critted. Even 50 or 25% decreases, but appreciated. Well, let's grab that countless eyes. And like I said, I do like that spell. We're going to try to get all the unique ones, because I can gift myself all the other scrolls. Scribe them so you can see what your entire spell book is going to look like. Let's get rank. Doo -doo. Uh, let's do these ones here. Get them caught up a little bit. They need a little bit of lubbing. All right. Proof 2 weapon fighting, waiting for you at 9. You said we wanted it. Now we're up to a third attack. Or a second attack on our offhand. So now you should have 2 and 2. Choppity, 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 choppity. You're swinging four times in a combat round. Five if you use haste or something like it. Or speed weapon, for that matter. Um, let's grab ourselves. Let's get resinous skin just so we have all the new ones. Like I said, we try to keep learning all the new stuff that we can. Uh, again, you're immune to poison, but you are always, always were. Uh, notice that you have uh, advanced talents. And that kind of sucks because that might screw us because we actually took that um, combat trick here. We may have wanted to take it here because we may have un unlocked cooler stuff. We'll see. We'll do that one, do that one, that one, and more athletics. Oh, it gave it to us. Oh, freaking sweet. Okay, so Crippling Strike is my advice to you. Uh, this is the one that every time you do sneak attack damage, you lower their strength by two. And you can kill them from taking their strength down to zero or less this way. So you can do with the multiple attacks that we're getting. This is a really, really choppy, choppy, choppy ability. Like, uh, Knock Knock, who is a rogue that does sneak attack, he unlocks this one and he just crumples, crushes stuff. So he's amazing. And again, because he two weapon wields as well. So if you can see how good Knock Knock is, you're going to be buffed up, so you'll be better than Knock Knock in many regards. Uh, hide other levels real quick. One's level four. Notice that Touch of Slime, if you do not get an infusion, this will hurt you. You cannot touch a target with this, you will touch yourself and you'll poison slash disease yourself. So. You're immune to that. It's not the point. Point is, it's a wasted spell. Don't bother. Um, fluid form. What are you? 
Air walk may have been new, but I doubt it. Fire shield is new. We'll look at that one too. So these two are probably your new ones. Fluid form. When you cast a spell, your body takes on a slick, oily appearance. For the duration of the spell, your form can stretch and shift with ease and become slightly transparent as if you were to pose a liquid. This transparency is not enough to grant concealment. You gain DR10 slashing, so bludgeoning and piercing attacks lowered by 10. And your reach is increased by 10 feet. Oh, yeah, yeah. We're going to be reaching all over the goddamn thing. You're like dolphin with knives. It's going to be fucking amazing. Probably not going to stack. But we'll find out. If it is, <laughs> Jesus. That's going to be fun. Um, let's do that. And uh, one, two, one, two. Sounds good. Uh, from here. Uh, we're looking for a uh, greater two weapon fighting. What's the cap off on that? Probably a bad of like 11. Oh, let's find out though. Greater two weapon. Greater two weapon. Bab of 11. And so again, we need, let's uh, see, 0, 1, 2, 3, 3, 4, 5, 6, 6, 7, 8, 9, 9, 10, 11. It'll be able to be able to 11, 15 that we get that shit. Okay? That's fine, because that gives us plenty of time to dilly dink around with whatever we feel like we need. Well, again, improve critical. Maybe you don't want to rely on your, your daggers being keen. It's a solid upgrade. Remember, they crit on a 19 and 20. Now they guarantee to crit on a 17, 18, 19, and 20. That's just double the crit potential there for you. I highly recommend you do so. Um, in here, what was the other one? Oh, Fire Shield. I want to show you this one. So Fire Shield is a, a similar spell that you, you've seen in the past, but with a little twitch. So you have two versions of this spell. One is called Warm Shield. One's called Cool Shield. Okay. Uh, one protects you from cold-based attacks. The other protects you from fire-based attacks. So that's why you actually like this spell. It helps you take less damage. Um, I'll keep reading though. Again, this is the one that does damage to anyone that strikes you. So this damage is either cold if you choose Chill Shield. That's the name. Sorry, Chill Shield. It does cold damage if it's chill. It does fire damage if it's warm. So again, if someone's immune to fire damage, you have a spell that can do cold damage. It's just you have to rely on them hitting you to do this. Attacker has spell resistance applies, blah, blah, blah. Creatures wielding weapons with reach are not subject to this. So again, if they have, like you do, the fluid form or the reach ability for like long arm or just like a big ass pole arm in their hand, they will sneak right through this shit and won't hurt them one bit. Um, it says it protects you from cold base or fire base attacks, depending on if you choose cool or warm flames for your fire shield. So I guess cold base attacks would be chill shield and warm shield would protect you from fire. I assume. I don't know that. It could be flip-flopped, but check that shit out. That would totally be worth it. And protects you doesn't give us a lot of information. Like, does it have it? Does it lower it by just a DR of 10? What? Doesn't really say. So you'd have to really test that out to get any kind of understanding on it. Nice bump to dexterity, more attack bonus, uh, more reflex bonus, more armor bonus if we get some of the better armor on, of course. Hey, whoa, 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 where are you going? Get over here. Um... Notice our trickery is going up, even because our dexterity is going up. And again, when we buff it, again, this goes up even more. So again, that's why I didn't mind stopping at 15. Uh, we will probably revisit it, but I definitely want to make sure athletics keeps going up. Because again, if you're the only one doing the checks, plus 10 is not enough. And yes, we can chuck a mutagen that buffs our strength, but it's only going to go up like 4 or 6 or 8. That means this is only going to go up 2, 3, or 4, so it's not amazing. So if you really want to invest in something, you can really consider that athletics might be something you take to a solid 10 or a 15. On here, notice that you don't have any wizardly ability, but you can, every time you sneak attack at son of a bitch, you can actually uh, have an equivalent um, dispel magic effect per sneak attack, which means every time you strike them for sneak attack damage, you're doing dispel magic on the motherfucker, so that literally, if you can, if you can, you can strip off some of their protection buffs, and you can see the appeal here. This is really, really nice, especially for a two-weapon fighter like you, because you get multiple attacks, multiple sneak attacks in a round as a result. This could be really, really helpful. Uh, if that's not your thing, again, we have a variety of new stuff here. Don't forget we have our greater mutagen unlocked itself uh, just now. And this is like a plus six to strength, plus four to dex, or plus six to dex, plus four to strength. Why do I say those two only? Because remember, you don't have a con stat. And this will be the only one I'll take. The next one will be greater, or, uh, the true mutagen down here. We don't need to get the grand mutagen, which is coming up. That's this little bastard here. Because, again, a bonus to dex and strength is appreciated, but a bonus to con, who gives a shit? The true mutagen, yes, it'll be a bonus to all three again, and I don't care about the con, but I do care about the strength and the dex both going up eight. That's a big, big boost for you, and I'm definitely worth waiting for that one. But we'll take the greater mutagen, earliest chances at 12. Uh, for here, we have everything we want, so we might as well start grabbing stuff you need, like the ability to make yourself invisible. 
Again, you have all these different permutations. Again, anything with con, just throw it in the trash. You don't even look at it. But the dex strength or the strength dex, those are the two that you'll flip flop between. Again, do you want more dex? If it says dex strength, that means this is the six, this is the four. If it says strength dex, this is the six, this is the four. Okay, so be real clear on that. So the only two that I'll put in my tray will be these two. Just to show that to you. Uh, again, they replaced the other one. You see how they took the other three away? So again, you're going to find the one that says strength dex, slap it down here. And you're going to say the one that says dex strength and slap it down there. And again, you always know the strength one is the one on top, the dex one is the one on the bottom. If you want the best one, that's when you cast, in my opinion. And again, just to show you your character, strength has gone up now, four points. Dex has gone up six. Our armor's gone up even more because of the natural armor enhancement jumped up to a plus four, now instead of a plus two. Uh, and it's also stacking with the other plus two mutant. Oh, that's freaky deaky. Uh, that was from earlier. Um, that's probably not going to be something you see, just to be clear. Notice, of course, our crippling strikes, you need to leave that on. I don't know why we would ever shut that off. It doesn't cause you any penalty to have these on, so you would leave these on all the time. Uh, notice we even have our bleeding attack. Looks like that's a toggle as well. It looks like that was going to be super fun. Um, I just wanted to show you uh, how you set that up in your tree. Alchemist. You know, skills. And we need that thing. And probably one of those things. And. Oh, let's do a little of that. Oh, remember, we're not going to get our, our greater two weapon fighting delay, so this is a mulligan. You can pick whatever the hell you want. Blind fighting is a solid choice. So is dodge. If you don't have dodge yet, feel free to grab it. That's extra armor. You totally want that. The blind fight's definitely something you're going to want in your build. Uh, over here at level 5, any new spells? Polymorph might be new. Transform into a wolf, a leopard, a large bear, or a large dire wolf, or a small elemental. Baller. A little weird. You do that. Those elemental body two. And notice that they've added the ability, I believe, uh, where you can cast spells in these forms still. So while normally I would advocate not using this, this could be quite amazing for you. Because it literally allows you to turn into a fire guy, melee, melee, still sneak attacking, by the way, because your sneak attacks don't go away just because of that, and you get a buff to your dex and strength or con or whatever. And a con you don't care about, I know. But the point is, you get a buff, and then um, probably doing like an elemental damage type like fire, for example, and that could get sneak attack love, and then you have um, some other fun to be had with the fact that you can still cast your spells on yourself. Delayed consumption, that's a new one. What's this? When you consume this extract, you quickly consume another extract of your choice. The second extract's effects do not come into effect until a later point. Oh, so it's like a delay um, oh no, uh, contingency spell. Uh, the companion extract uh, can be no higher than fourth level, and you must pay the, any cost associated with that. Of course, you don't worry about that. Any, at any point during the duration of this extract, of this one, one day per level or until discharge, uh, you, uh, you can cause the companion extract to take effect as a swift action. You can only have one delay consumption in effect at one time. If a second is consumed, the first is a spell. Fuck yeah. What this is. So, we understand what this is. Um, you cast this spell, and it'll say cast another spell. And it basically goes into like a pocket. Okay, like a pocket dimension, pocket of your character. Whatever you want to call it. And literally, it's always there waiting for you to say, Oh, I want that spell. Let me give you a for instance of a spell that never says level 4 or door. Holy shit, we got jumped. I haven't cast invisibility, and as a swift action, I'm invisible. Oh shit, <laughs> invisible. Or, uh, oh shit, shield spell. You get the idea. This is the contingency, the oh shit, what do I do? And you have that oh shit, just be real choosy about what you're picking. There's a lot of good stuff in here, of course, but pick the thing that's going to save your ass is obviously the way to go here. And it really does give you a lot more uh, utility than you think, because again, even think of like a haste spell, okay? You get jump, haste instantly, and I can still attack in the same round, and I have more ground speed, and I have better dodge, and I have better reflexes, and I have more attacks around, and probably some sneak attack. So you can see the appeal here. So those really are important. You won't slot that heavily, but you'll have that once, obviously. You, every time you use it up, you'll recast that spell. And again, it'll last you for multiple days. You put in the pocket, whatever spell, and it's just sitting there. And it doesn't sound like it goes away until you use it, which means... I can swap that out of my spell book, put in a different spell, level 5, 
nap and I still have that buff still waiting for me to use it and until I use it I don't need to relearn that spell the, the contingency spell so that's kind of cool uh, from here all your uh, mutagens are lasting for uh, an hour per uh, caster level now so you're gonna finally finish at 20 but 14 hours so again we have two uses a day that's 28 hours of protection you're probably fine now you don't skew that thing uh, I think at this point I really do want to get athletics up to a solid number and I know it's going to be better than this because a we're not going to have penalties from things like studded leather uh, but also we'll have bonuses because we'll buff our strength with a, a, a mutagen for example to take it up to a 12 so it'll be in of course gear as well so it'll be higher than you think but this getting it to about a 15 will probably make me happy um, here I could see grabbing something like Fast Stealth, Extended Potion, Dispelling Attack, or Preserve Organs again. 50% chance now that Sneak Attacks and Crits don't land. I'm good with that. And again, the goal is not to be hit at all, but when they do hit, do you really want it to be a crit? So having that take that guaranteed crit down to a 50% chance it'll be a crit, that makes me real happy. Here I'm going to take um, Plant Shape 1. Now, do we even have that? You become a small man or Goro. And plus two size, your dex and con, we don't care about that part, but the natural armor bonus, move speed increase, and you also gain a one bite attack and two slams and a poison ability. Sure. That's not that fun. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. And I'm done with athletics now as far as I'm concerned. And let's do that one and that one. And a little bit of stealth, because why not? Cool, cool, cool. Give it to me. Uh, right, great to up and fighting. A spell, I'm going to take uh, Overland Flight because that's a really good spell. A little bit faster, not amazingly so, but lasts forever. And then it's uh, immunity to difficult terrain, ground based effects, that's awesome. And then plus three dodge armor against melee attacks is amazing. Against non flying melee attacks, I should be real clear on that. Boom, now we're not done here yet, but I do want to do something here for you. We're going to gift yourself all the scrolls as well as a bag of holding or so. So that we can hold that shit without worrying about it. So do bag of. And the only reason I'm doing this is because I want you to see the list that you could have had available to you. Okay. So if you do that and you want to find scrolls, like all of them, so show item sets. See that? Scroll around through here and you'll actually see add all scrolls. It will lock up your game for a moment because it's a lot of fucking scrolls. That's why we needed the bags of holding, because it's gonna be fucking heavy. And it finally gives you a control again. Go back here, and again, it's going to slow down your game, because look at all the shit you got. But again, look at all the shit you got. And again, look at all the things that are color-coded. This is your key here. Remember, we have a mod that shows you, if you can scribe it, it's in a different color, which is the green you're seeing here. So, Legendary Proportions. Notice that's a level 7 spell. I'm going to scribe it, even though we can't use it. Uh, you'd be surprised how many spells they'll give you that are actually, you can't use them. But you can still scribe them. So you, you need to know this too, because again, don't, don't do like me. I'm doing this to demonstrate stuff. What you're doing is you're gonna get everything that you can scribe, that you can use, and have it in your kitty, so to speak. So that when you're leveling up, if a, if a spell comes up that isn't on this list, it's because it's from the mods, and the mods didn't add scroll form. So you wanna pick it as you level up. That's why we're doing this, okay? That's why I said we would kinda focus on the new spells. I know all these normal spells would be in here for us to describe. And you'll do this as you find them in the game. So that's not an issue. If you can describe them, of course. And if you can cast that level of spell eventually. It doesn't even have to matter that you can't cast it yet. Like right now we can't cast level 6 spells, I don't think. Or can we? Are we at level 6 yet? We might be. No, it's at 16. So we're about, about there. Um, but we'll have them waiting for us is my point and now we'll see what a, a full spell book looks like minus a, a few spells that were unique ones that again didn't have scroll form that's why i do this and again this is cheating you would not technically want to do this in the game if you wanted to play it normal but you would find most of these from vendors and, and just like street trash stuff that you picked up um people are really dumb in this game about leaving their magic items just lounging around in their houses that you know as the ruler of the kingdom i'm allowed to walk into so be surprised how many of these things you will just find randomly um, and that do a quick survey just to make sure you're not missing anything i think we're covered 
Uh, and again, normally I do these in um, type so that it really, when you look at them, they're in like alphabetical order. Like so. Some of these are duplicates, which is why we scribed one and it took away four of the colored coded ones. But that should get you where you need to go and if, before we go any further, just to look at your spell book. These are the ones we haven't, we haven't even cast yet to level 16. And notice that we're less than 16. Oh, I gotta gift myself something too. Uh, you're less 16 intelligence. By now, though, you would have found yourself um, an intelligence something or other. So probably like a piece of headwear. Let's just give us the cheap uh, TR of intelligence plus uh, two, four, or something like that. There we go. Four. You'll probably have found something like this or something better is my point. That's why I don't feel bad about gifting it to me now, but it, it gives your intelligence a bump. The reason it went down was because of your mutagen, and it's saying that, oh, you can't make those spells. Now, go back to level six, and you'll see that. We're fine. We just can't cast spells yet because we're not high enough level, but these will be available to you and maybe more. Again, new spells, but these are some interesting things. Now, some of these are probably not going to work for you. You are undead, so legendary proportions might not work on you. Same with uh, enlarged person, reduced person. You are not a person. You are undead, so be clear that some of these will not work. It's worth testing. You might not even be able to be shaped for all I know being undead. Who the hell knows? But we will find out. But there's still plenty of really good things in here that you're going to want to have. So be aware of that. Um, and know that they did change with this mod a variety of things. So stuff like uh, you could turn into a Smilodon before. That was always the thing. But now it's a Smilodon or a huge Mastodon. Plant shape is a new one. Um, you can cast spells while in your elemental body forms. Uh, where's your other be shape? Here's a large bear or a large dire wolf. Here is your ability to turn into a medium wolf or medium leopard, something that you only got one of these before. And again, I'm not saying that it's amazing. I'm just saying that there are differences. So if you see something like, oh, that didn't used to be there, it's because of the mods. Okay, so let's be real clear on this. And again, we'll slot stuff up later. I just want to get through the build. Here, skill ranks. Uh, we are really good at dexterity, but let's do a quick math number here. Okay, so you're at 22 innately that's a plus six okay and i can get you guaranteed with the right gear of course in a potion you can get this up another four well this one up another eight ten twelve so plus six i can get this six higher guaranteed okay so this would be at a plus twelve then you have your mutagen right you got that true mutagen you're gonna get by level 20 that's a plus eight so that's another four here so 12 we're up to a 16 that's higher than we need it to be because even with the best leather on that would allow you to use a max dexterity of plus six, uh, 15, we're already at plus 16 now by the end of the build, like I said. We're going to be losing out on some of that beautiful, beautiful dodge bonus over here. 15 is good, 16 is better, but again, not that big of a deal that we're losing out a little bit. And again, that means you could wear robes or you could use that armor that I'm suggesting. So I don't need to go higher here is my point. So what would I like higher? Do you want more fortitude? Maybe you want to get that wisdom up so it's not a complete shithole toilet. So again, take this up to a nine. Eight's good enough, but the point is you can get a little bump to it if you wanted to. Uh, if that's not your thing, we could add to two more points. We have two more to spend here and at 20. Get your strength up to a 10. Again, you're buffing it with gear besides, but why have it be bad before the gear? You know what I'm saying? Or the mutagen for that matter. So again, plenty of choices here. I, I think you probably actually want intelligence though to go up a little bit more because you get more spells a day by the time you get to 22 here. And you'll get even more skills at the very end of the build, which allow you to flush yourself out just the tiniest bit more at the end. Again, I'm happy with athletics being 15. I'm happy with uh, this being 11. It's kind of crap, but it's what it is. It's actually uh, better than you think um, because you've probably got some deck space gear and your mutagens making all these numbers go high, high, high. Uh, at this point, though, we can do like that and then maybe more persuasion. From here, we have one, two, three, four more to pick from. So be real choosy here. Uh, I think we're going to grab, we can get that last preserve organs and get it to 75% chance where crits and, and sneak attacks aren't, aren't going through. And that's not bad. That's really, really good. If it weren't for the mummification being fucking broken, I would love this because immunity to cold paralysis and sleep is nice. You would still get these two immunities, by the way. But we have like freedom of movement spell that you can cast on yourself. That's just as good as this. And sleep is probably not something you're going to run into anymore anyway. Uh, cold would make ourselves immune with gear, so I'm not particularly worried. So this is kind of wasted, but uh, preserved organs to 75% is not bad. Infusion is not bad, and again, we would probably pick it up around here. If you if you're not going, I'm not going to because we're testing stuff out. But if you're going to pick it up here or here, uh, I do like extend potion. 
I do like dispelling attacks, I do like fast stealth, and that's three of the four things that we wanted, so chances are we're going to grab all these three, and then probably infusion. Uh, if I'm not grabbing in, in, infusion, I'll probably grab the preserve organs. So when you see me grab preserve organs, like I'm doing right now, replace it with infusion. Okay, You don't need this one. It's nice, you don't need it. This one is nice, and you do want it. So swap it out. But I'm going to do this for testing purposes. Level 6. Ah, see, here's all the spells we're missing. Okay, so now watch this. Remember, we've scribed everything we could find. We gifted ourselves every get, and that look is our big. So we got a lot of shit here. But let's watch. Fine Strike still missing. I probably want that. Just to have it. See, Invisible Communal is missing. Really? Fly is missing, too. Ooh, wow, okay. Uh, air Walk is missing. Air Walk Communal is missing. Wind Walk, Plant Shape 2 in Giant Form. Let's take a look at all these. Fire features of a troll, fire giant, or frost giant. Oh, hell yeah, we'll see if we can do that. Again, we may not be able to because you're undead. But plant uh, shape two, turn into a shambling mound. That's awesome. Uh, wind walk, what is this? One hour per level. Uh, yeah, wind walk and gains physical form as desired and later resumes the cloud form. Oh, wow. Increase if your group while on global map increases to 20 miles per hour. Fuck! That's cool. I want that one. We'll get that later. Uh, so again, we'll probably not get every spell because I didn't scribe everything to my book until too late, probably. Uh, I'm probably happy with these being stuck here at 10 and 10 like that. And again, with our intelligence booth, we might have even more to dump there later. Now, you really are probably feeling the pinch, though, for persuasion not being good enough. And again, you've buffed up your charisma with gear and blah, blah, blah. So it's not that it's bad. It's just I'd like it to be higher. At this point, there, there is really nothing that you need in this build. You got a greater two weapon fighting, you got your dodge, but there's still stuff that's useful. Blind fight is always useful, and all these new mechanics in here are useful. I could do, um, we didn't talk about it, but we could do meta magics. Obviously, the one to get would be extend, because most of your stuff is buffs for yourself, right? So why not have it last twice as long? Well, I don't need it, because I'm going to have enhanced potions, and I'm going to have extend potions, which means any potion I chug will be at full cast or level 20. And instead of it lasting for 20 rounds or 20 minutes or 20 hours or whatever it would last for, it's going to be twice as long thanks to the extend potion that we're yet to pick up. So again, we're going to be fine. You don't really need this one. The spells can be used for a variety of other things, but potions are going to be your bread and butter. Um, Multi-attack is interesting, by the way, for those that went the... Um, we didn't, uh, but for there's a, there's a mutagen, a discovery you can pick up for your mutagen that... When you do chug a mutagen, you turn into a feral beast where you have claws and a bite attack. So two claws and one bite. And again, that's three attacks in a round, and you could have picked that shit up at like level two or three or five or whatever. So you could have grabbed it early is my point. Notice multi-attack. The creature reduces secondary attacks penalty to minus two if it has three or more natural attacks. That sounds like you, don't it? Then it uh, does not have the requisite three or normal or more natural attacks. They give you uh, another second offhand attack at a minus five penalty. So it's like getting you a two weapon fighting for free. And again, that could have been cool. That could have been interesting. I don't know how that plays out with two weapon fighting though. So I don't think that would have been a thing. But that could have been an option instead of going two weapon fighting, grabbing that mutagen, especially when you get two mutagens a day so you can almost guarantee you always have those claws in the bite. Uh, and then watch this stuff. When you're fighting defense or using the total defense action or combat expertise, select one opponent, add your charisma bonus, to dodge against that bastard. So this makes you feel like a monk, even if you're not a monk. It's only against one dude, but you need a persuasion, a dodge, uh, or something like dodge. Remember, your intelligence-based one. But if you're already a charisma-based dude, and you are, remember, you're getting all that beautiful, beautiful HP thanks to this plus four here, and a high fortitude thanks to that plus four here. So again, pretty damn cool. Just saying that there's a, a variety of things that we could have done there. Uh, so really interesting stuff we could have done. But I still maintain that blind fight is your go-to here. Uh, notice that signature skill just to show you these. There's three of them. Okay, so Intimidate, Heal, and Mobility. They have some interesting features. You have to have unlocked enough points in them. Those are Mobility didn't get high enough. But Intimidate, again, look what it does. Heal, interesting. Mobility, love this one. When you knock prone, you get back up. You do not provoke an attack of opportunity. And that's pretty damn cool. It's not amazing, but again, my point is, is there was a lot of really neat stuff that they've added to this. Uh, mods uh, have added to these uh, um, feat lists. So some really interesting things that we could really have capitalized on that we did not do. Just wanted to point out that there are other options besides the traditional bland um, blind fighting, two weapon fighting, proved weapon fighting stuff. I'm going to take that uh, plant shape too to see if we can
turn ourselves into it. Remember, we are undead, so there's going to be a lot of things that we can't do that the modern doesn't tell us. So we have to figure it out for ourselves. I probably want to get that up to a solid uh, 15. One more point in that, and I'll probably be done with using magic device. Uh, again, over here, we said we wanted that extend potion and dispelling attack. It's time to get that extend potion. Taking that wind walk. Keep going. Keep going. Do, 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 do. And looking good. Okay. All right. Last one here. Work our way from the bottom up. Make sure they're not missing something. Uh, we got our weapon focus in our daggers already, so we're doing good there. We don't do intimidating prowess. We already got improved critical for our daggers. We're doing good there. We don't need any of this stuff. Combo sneak attacker is a waste. Vital Strike is a weird one. Someone had pointed out that there is a good reason to go Vital Strike, uh, improve Vital Strike, Greater Vital Strike, whatever the hell they're called. Because it's like two times, three times, four times the damage. But then you only get one swing. Those would be amazing for builds that only have like two swings normally anyway. So like a fighter that's getting four swings by level 20, well actually by level 16, they would probably not really like that. Um, there's reasons to want it though, because you make that swing at full swing, which means full base attack bonus. Remember, a fighter, if he swings four times at level 16 and up, he swings at a full strength, then at minus 5, then at minus 10 to his swing, then at minus 15 to his uh, swing. So again, it's decreasing the number of chances he's going to hit, 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 hit. Where that could have been, if he hits all four times, that's four times the damage. You can see the appeal. This one here, if you hit this one once and once only, you double the damage. So it's just like you hit him twice. Same with the improved version. Instead of being twice, it goes three times. Same with the greater version, it goes up to four times. So again, you can see the appeal. You swing once, but you hit for a metric shit ton of damage. The downside is, and this is the real downside here, uh, roll the weapons damage dice, roll it twice or three or four times, depending on if you got vital strike, improved vital strike, or greater vital strike. But watch this part. Before adding the bonuses from strength, weapon abilities, like is it on fire, precision-based damage, like your sneak attack and shit like that, and other damage bonuses. So that's not getting multiplied. So it's not quite as good. But again, the point is, is do you want to hit for like 1d6 for a long sword, or do you want to hit for 2d6, 3d6, or 4d6? You see the appeal. But then, wait, if you made yourself bigger in large person, for example, a 1d6 jumps up to 2d6. Remember, you're a larger size category, so is your weapon. Now imagine that doing twice the damage. So instead of 2d6, it's now 4. Or 3d6, or sorry, 3 times, it's instead of 2d6, it's now 6d6. If you got the greater vital strike, where you do 4 times the strike, Instead of 2d6, it's now 8d6 of damage for that fucking long sword swing. And then, of course, you add your strength and blah, blah, blah. Now you can see the appeal. Wait, it gets even better. That's only if you do enlarged person. What if you had legendary proportions? This character has it, but again, as undead, I don't think we can do it on ourselves. But if you did, you're two size categories higher. So you're not just a bigger person like a large person. You're actually even bigger than that. So again, a 1d6 goes to 2d6 now, it goes to 3d6, and again, double that, so 6d6, triple that, 9d6, quadruple that, 12d6 of damage, once and once only, so you can see the appeal. These are not as bad as I had made them out. It's just very situational, from my understanding. And again, I'm, pr I'm sure I'm missing some of the finer nuances of it, but this is really, really good from what I understand for people that only get like one or two attacks anyway. So like a wizard or sorcerer that gets like a crap at bad by the end, you're only going to hit the hit him probably once really anyway. Why not have it really hit hard? You can see the appeal. So these can be fun. We just didn't do it. Uh, what are we going to grab? Iron will. And you may say, why bother? Your will sucks. A plus two is still a plus two. I could get improved blind fight. There's nothing wrong with this, and ignoring total consumption is a solid choice, but we're going to have spells that like see invis on our character, and I don't really care. And there might be something else that I'm missing in here that could be awesome, you know, Heartful Dodge, Broken Wing Gambit, blah, blah, blah. But, again, you really have a hole here with Iron, uh, with your will being a garbage will safe. Again, we will have wisdom-based gear. We'll have cloaks of resistance or other stuff to give us resistance bonuses. So that will save that looks like shit right now is actually a lot better than you think. But it's not that much better. Now, do we need Airwalk Communal? Again, I'd probably say no. Do we need Airwalk? Again, I'd probably say no. Fly, that's useful. See, Invisible Communal is useful, but we probably have seen Invis down here. Let's see, so we don't really need it twice, do we? Vine Strike, we're missing that still. I suppose we could grab that. But again, we're not going to use it. I'll grab Fly. Okay. 
now we get to have some fun. So first off, um, let's look at the stuff that we're missing. Notice the uh, the, the feral mutagen. That was the one I was telling you about for the two two claw attacks and one bite attack. Could be interesting. It really could make a really fun build, and the, and the part of that build is going like full Batman mode or, or Man Bat, where you get feral wings as well. Where you get free wings every time you drink that mutagen as well. And again, you don't have to get fly spells or um, uh, overland flight spells. You just have them all the damn time, so long as you're under the effect of the mutagen. And by the time you're level 14 and you have two mutagens a day, you're under the effect of this mutagen all the time. So you go Man Bat like crazy. Sneak Attack Love and all that shit beside you, old Bat shit crazy. Then... Uh, we're going to unlock an ability that you're really going to love here as part of your grand mutagens, or you could have. We're not going to, but you could have. Uh, let's just skip right to it first. Let's get skill rank. Uh, what are we going to grab in here? Um, you don't precise bomb nothing. Spontaneous heal is lame, uh, but the ability to free action heal yourself is not the worst thing ever. You heal five hit points as if you had a fast healing ability. You heal 5 hit points per day in this manner for every two alchemist levels, so you can do that uh, 10 times a day. So 50 health by the end of the build, if you grab that thing. But only if you click it every damn round, like for 10 rounds in a row, you get 5, 5, 5, 5. So it's something. Uh, and honestly, there's nothing else in here that I'd want, except for maybe infusion, which again, like I said, we're not going to take for testing purposes. Nauseating flesh is another possibility. Uh, I hesitate to mention this one because it only really matters if they bite your ass. And it's not going to be something that's common. Um, it makes them nauseated if they fail their fortitude safe. It's not a big deal. Let's actually grab that spontaneous healing. Fuck it. Next. More intelligence. And look at your skill points jump up. Went from 4 to 14. Very nice. Push that up. Now, if you really wanted to capitalize on persuasion, you could make that fully 20. Or athletics, you could again jump that up fully 20 or if you wanted just to get trickery up a little bit more to get it to a nice even pace maybe you want to get some stealth going maybe you want to spread it around a little bit so that you have like three and three and three so you feel even steven so to speak across the damn board again on you how you set those up notice that you can do a plus two to your intelligence permanently doesn't give you any extra skill points i don't think but if you needed more spell casting spells a day that would count for that uh, true mutagen is one we're going to grab because that's that plus 8, plus 8, plus 8. We don't care about the con, but the other two 8s we do. I mean, it's a minus 2 at intelligence, wisdom, and charisma will still take a hit. But it's a plus 8 natural armor bonus besides that shit's money. Uh, coming back to it here in a second. But um, on this list, again, notice that we don't have much in here. I do like the dispelling attacks. Uh, slow reactions could be interesting. This one, uh, for those of you who don't know, that's the... Um, if you sneak attack somebody... They can't make an attack of opportunity for one round. It's not amazing, but it does help. Uh, if they, they're like trying to double team you and they can set themselves up for some attacks of opportunity on you, this makes that go away. Um, other stuff in here, fast stealth is still appealing. Dispelling attack is appealing. Again, I can't tell you what to grab here. We grabbed um, something I really didn't want over here, the spontaneous healing, because I thought I was going to get one of these here. Um, but that's okay. Again, pick one of these two, and you'll be happy with it. And then from here, I'm grabbing your mutant, but I just wanted to show you that this would be the other option, especially if you went for that uh, Raging Beast Man Bat form. You permanently regenerate five health every round, just without fail. If you survive the fight, you will fully heal, which is pretty badass, but then you don't get the true mutant. If I were going to go this route, though, you better believe that before now I would have grabbed, or like here, I would have grabbed the, the better mutant, the grand mutant. It's an eight, a six, and a four. That's good enough for me. Because I can make Dexterity plus 8 and Strength plus 6 con I could care less about. That's not that bad. Uh, and again, that's totally worth doing. But, let's just say it. True Mutant is better. Okay. Uh, last spell. No. No. Don't need it. I'm just right showing that. So we didn't get everything. But enough of everything that we can pl plan some stuff out. So first off... Uh, here, let's actually gift ourselves some stuff. You, If you're going to be solo, there's no reason not to get the best of everything. The Hat of Mental Perfection plus 8 is a solid upgrade. Uh, let's go back to belts. Uh, you're also going to get yourself probably the Belt of Physical Perfection plus 8. And those two things alone, like so, are amazeballs. Uh, these supplies. I just want to sell this garbage. 
Uh, take everything. I don't need all these scrolls. And again, you will keep these scrolls for yourself for a reason. Remember, you have a high use magic device, so you will be able to cast these stuff. I'm just going to get rid of them because it's logging up my game. If you, you gift yourself like entire kits of weapons and armor and everything else like this, it really does bog down the game quite a bit, by the way. Uh, so, another reason I'm not a fan. I wish I could just fucking say sell everything. Good lord, there's a lot of spells in this game. Sorry guys, it bugs me. And like I said, I do know it locks up my game, so I don't like having it messing up my stuff. Um, well, while we're doing this, let's talk about some things. So, uh, with the, the daggers we're going to gift you, I'm going to show you some of the best daggers in the game. I'm not going to tell you where you can get them, but you can get many of the good ones, not the great ones, some of the good ones very early. Uh, in Chapter 2, no less, you can like, rush, I recommend rushing immediately to one of them. And it gives you like a plus one dagger that's like plus three to your armor because it gives you like plus three to your dodge and it makes you immune to like nausea condition, which you were already immune to anyway. But on a, a non undead build, it's an amazing dagger to have, especially for like a wizard because you can cast, say, Stinking Cloud at your feet now. You're immune to that nausea condition and therefore when they try to run in and stab your ass, they're hopefully puking their guts out and you can just stab, 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 or spell, spell, spell them to death. It's an easy way to solo a lot of the game at that point. Uh, but you need to have that dagger or immunity to poison, which of course you do. But you do not have the ability to cast Stinking Cloud except from like a wand or a scroll. Highly recommend you find some. The fact that you're immune to poisons mean anything that's a poison area of effect is perfect for you, build from level one on up. Because being immune to those poisons and diseases for that matter, if they run into the cloud of whatever we're talking about, they're probably infected. You are totally immune. It doesn't affect you one whit. And you will appreciate having something like that, I would think. So again, on you. Uh, but what I wanted to do uh, is I wanted to gift you a variety of things. So let's actually start doing that. Armor, let's start there. Uh, the armor I'm thinking of is called Guardian Armor, Royal Guardian. Uh, look at this one. Say, plus five studded leather, which you can totally wear. Uh, maximum dexterity bonus of plus 15. And you get 20 extra HP for just wearing the goddamn thing. So that's not bad. Uh, and again, we can, uh, talk about whether it's worth wearing robes uh, and there are good robes like envy of the master bonus to intelligence bonus to wisdom armor bonus besides and you get your full plus 16 dexterity uh dexterity now and you get a free spell that you didn't have access to just saying there's a lot of good robes in the game so again look through this list i'm not saying don't grab them uh, one of my favorites though is the dark master's robe because of the eight intelligence and charisma for you remember you don't have to wear the hat same with the belt. You don't have to wear just this belt. Remember, the dex uh, and strength is what you care about. Khan is giving you nothing. So there's a, a, a dex ring that's plus eight. There's a gloves of strength plus eight out there that you definitely want in this free ray spell. Bam, bam, bam. You can get sneak attack love with. Totally worthwhile. Then you give your belt to something different. Something new. Something like a, you know, a, a bonus to your spells, maybe. Maybe a free spell a day that you didn't have access to. Especially ones that are like at will, where you can always cast them at every fucking level is money that's something you want but um just putting this on to show you that your your touch armor see the uh, 13 you're not done yet because you haven't buffed up with everything yet um but you're working at it you're very very close um we want to have uh, uh, uh okay let's get rings try i'm trying to remember all the stuff we want to give you i'm gonna probably go down the list footwear we'll do that one next a the one that I always swear by is the Manticore Skin Boots. That doesn't mean there's not good choices in here. Avoid stuff, though, that's like, you're immune to um, poison. Where the hell is it? Hell Strider? You're immune to poison. You are always immune to poison. The Fire 30 Resistance, on the other hand, that's money. I mean, you're susceptible to fire. Having that 30 Resistance goes a long way. Swamp Della Boots, uh, immune to ability damage and ability drain. You're undead. I don't think you're actually... Uh, affected by these things anyway but if you are these are amazing so again you will have a variety of, of gear in your pack that's why you have the bags of holding especially when you're running solo so you can carry all this random ass loot and you're like oh it's, it's like uh uh jim davis what did he always fucking say uh, th there's a there's a, a steady creep 
of, of gear accumulation in D&D, especially pen and paper versions. And again, certainly on computer versions where you're not controlled by a DM deciding that, you know, oh, you fall into an acid pit and lose all your gear. You don't do that shit. So how do we adjust for it? Well, think of it this way. It's like you said that uh, you get too much of this gear creep and people are like randomly, like even fighters that are not magically inclined, right? are just like stomping through the forest, murdering things that should be a difficult fight, but they, they already have the weapon to beat it. It's like, you know, geez, give me my flaming sword. I have a troll to kill. That's you, baby. That's exactly what this is when you play solo. So you have the bags of holding. You have all the potions and the scrolls and the wands that you can possibly use. You have the four or five different uh, clothing outfits and boots and gloves and necklaces so that when you come to an area and say, oh, I can't beat this guy with the gear I have on, let me go to an earlier save, see what I could swap out. Oh, look, he's doing drain damage to me. Well, I got these Swamp Dweller boots that would make me immune to that shit. Time to uh, switch out that for the Manticore skin boots. And again, you can see the appeal. So you're going to have a lot of these things that you can swap out. Same with skill checks. Uh, like I mentioned before on the cloaks. Let's actually just skip to that one right now. There's a cloak of shadows. Is this our guy? You can buy early on in Chapter 2 from one of your vendors. Plus 10 to your stealth checks. Remember, this is the thing you put on just before you camp. Because you're the only person going to be there. You're the only one that's going to do the job. And that job is going to be stealth. You do stealth. You eat a ration. You make sure you pack enough rations to, to camp. Because you're not hunting shit. So you have to have rations. I would suggest always leaving your town with two to three minimum. But again, with a, a bag of holding or a couple of bags of holding, you should have no problem carrying that shit. And you go down. Oh, I'm, I'm out of spells. or getting real low. Time for me to fucking camp. Put on this cloak. Set yourself for the stealth job eat a ration, camp through the night, chances are you will not be mugged. It helps you more than you know. And the immunity to other shit that's early on anyway is extremely valuable. But you'll take that off in the morning and put on your cloak of resistance plus six or something else. And again, variety of cool stuff in here. Wyvern skin cloak for some protection. Uh, we have a uh, shaman's cloak that gives you saving throw bonus and elemental body for early on. It's a spell. I'm a fan of any piece of gear that gives me a spell a day, especially ones I didn't have access to. Uh, there's plenty in here that give you buffs and, and, and uh, armor and um, the ability to turn into things. One that give you bonus to uh, charisma, an energy drain spell you didn't have access to. Here's Noxious Veil, one that allows you to be re highly resistant to acid, cast acid thought. Again, there's a laundry list of shit in here that's amazing for you. Gloves, uh, my favorite, of course, are always like the, the staples. So you got your Royal Gloves of Valor, Ultimate Grip, Lightest Touch. Uh, I like my... Uh, death from afar if I'm doing ranged attacks which you are not doing uh, I also like my star soldier's gauntlets for my extra strength trap springers gloves that's a bonus weirdly not for um, stuff that you would think necessarily but trickery is good enough for you and that's a, not a bad little bump for your character master hand use magic device if that's a thing you need to pass a check you know maybe you're using a wand outside of combat to cure yourself of a, an affliction that you got hit with you don't have enough use magic device you will have this in your pack Swap out your gloves. Cast the wand now. Oh, it works. Okay, take this gloves back off. Put the wand away. Again, you'd be surprised at how often you switch stuff out. Uh, and again, it's going to be a constant theme. Uh, headwear. Just because you grab the perfect hat doesn't mean you want to wear that ugly ass hat. So again, there's a crown that's close enough. Uh, maybe you want something that's going to uh, buff you in another way. Maybe give you a higher perception check. Again, there's like glasses in here. Like Eyes of the Eagle, I think, do that. Yeah, bonus to your perception. Again... If you're just traipsing around looking for treasure that you missed, put on something else. Give you something that busts your skills. Give you something that busts your knowledge or your lore or whatever. Variety of things. Uh, miscellaneous items. There's more to talk about. Uh, Necklace items. There's a variety of shit in here. And again, there's going to be stuff in here that bumps your charisma, your intelligence probably. Definitely going to be stuff in here that buffs your constitution, which you don't need. There's a variety of things that give you free spells. There's a variety of stuff that buffs your, you know, like um, haste spell. Uh, there's uh, my personal favorite, of course, is that guy, Roma's Amulet. Uh, for you, also, another favorite is um, the necklace of Double Cross. There it is. Uh, in the heart of Ira. Uh, again, there's reasons for me wanting these things. So let's actually start talking about various things. First, uh, the Bone Threader Boots, resistance to physical damage. Uh, Manticore Skin Boots, bonus to your armor and your speed. You appreciate extra speed, don't you? I know I do. You're extra zippy now, and that's before you even cast a spell on yourself. If you don't like those, we have, um, uh, I didn't grab the other ones, the, the, the ones, the Swamp Dweller Boots that give you immunity to ability and energy drain type, type effects. Uh, if you're attacking with ray spells, which you don't have, but you could if you had a different build, Death from Afar is amazing. 
if you're attacking with just ranged attacks with like a weapon, then you want your um, what is it? Precise shot. Where are you, little bastard? Did I not give it to the others? This one's right here. Plus five to ranged weapons. That's not ray spells. Ranged weapons. That might be bombs. It's definitely thrown weapons and anything with a bow, crossbow, a typical ranged weapon, but not ray spells. Don't like either of those. Uh, we have lightest touch. If you didn't have dexterity, here's at least a plus six. Not a plus eight, but a plus six. Bonus to your reflexes. Not that you needed it, but again, you got it right now. Uh, that's not bad. And the ability to cast reduce person at will. Again, can't be used on you because you can you're undead, so it doesn't really do you a lot of good. Uh, Royal Gloves of Valor. Maybe you didn't wear the hat and you wanted that charisma high. Remember, you're getting extra HP from that little fucker. That plus eight. That's eight times 20. You got 160 extra health here because of this. And again, that's as high as I can get it. I'm actually can get it a little too... I get you uh, too higher here. So I can get you another 40. I can get you up to 323 health by the end of this build. That's not bad. And again, part of that's also coming from the armor here, too. But again, solid, solid choices. Uh, necklaces, the like Gyronis Amulet's your, your go-to for extra armor across the board, especially for a solo build. The higher you touch armor class, the easier you will find soloing. That is not the only way to solo. I have seen a guy named Mithril's. I highly recommend his video. Um, he showed multiple videos. He doesn't talk usually in them, so it's probably more appreciated than mine. And his videos are brief and to the point then. So he shows you how to beat the game solo with like a pure sorceress. With a, a Eldritch Knight. Uh, and I, probably even another one that I just don't remember. But again, he metagamed like crazy. He knew what kind of gear he was going to get, when to get it, where to go to grab stuff like these necklaces. This is how I know about these tricks too. And he literally did not have a touch armor class on that sorceress that anywhere approached what we're looking at right now. I guarantee it. So, how did he win? Spells, baby. He had a shit ton of spells. He would literally round up people into a fucking corner when they were all chasing them down the pathway because it wasn't turn-based combat back then. He would literally get them grouped up in a nice uh, tight ball as they're chasing them down the hallway. He would lightning bolt down the hallway and fry their fucking asses or fireball, fireball, fireball. And he had so many spells a day with a sorceress build that he like, maxed out on charisma and probably had some decent decks besides and gear. He knew exactly what he was doing. He would literally take a knee go into an area, beat the entire fucking map with just one rest. He never rested, like he would have enough spells in the day for him to literally beat that area. And if he didn't have spells, he used wands, he used scrolls, you will do the same. He healed up with potions and shit like that. So what? You don't have a healer? Doesn't matter. You got potions, don't you? That's a pocket cleric, baby. You love that shit. And again, you heal better than anybody with those things, thanks to the uh, discoveries that I gave you. So again, you will be fine. It's weird, but it's going to be fine. If you don't get the Gyrona's Amulet, and you can't get that until late in the game, really, anyway. Necklace of Double Crosses, you can have forged for you when you find all the pieces. Look at this little fucker. Bonus to Trickery, Stealth, and Mobility. You care about those, don't you? And you get Sneak Attack extra for melee sneak attacks against flat for the opponents. Remember, you're two weapon wielding, baby. That's 2d6 per. So that's a nice little jump for you. And then, it's a penalty if you have an ally near you that tries to move away from you, you stab his ass. That's why it's a Necklace of Double Crosses. But you're running solo, bitch. This is a very nice necklace for you. Don't like that one? Okay, this is the other one that you want. Uh, Heart of Ira. This is the one that you can beat uh, a really nasty boss fight by being invisible. Not greater invis, just invis. Potions of invis, no less. Chug it, stand right next to this fucker, turn this thing on. It will not trigger the fight, but he will continue to take 2 to 12 points of damage a round. Just standing there twitching like a frog in a science experiment. The motherfucker finally drops and you get all the XP for yourself because you shut off XP share. An XP share for anyone that's not on the team. So again, you will out-level content really, really fast by level... Uh, in a chapter one, you should be level eight. Put it that way. And you really should be on a team probably around level five. Maybe if you really push it, level six. But probably five for a team of six people that are all are level five. That's what you're fighting. And you're level eight. You're three levels then higher than the content you're about to experience. And if you start dipping into Tenabra's Depths, because that'll unlock for you once you get your kingdom... And you can go in solo. I don't recommend it in many cases, but if you can do it successfully, do so because you'll get enough XP from that. But by the time you finish this game, well before you finish this game as a soloist character, you'll be level 20 by the time you get to pit tax. It's amazing. Again, if you don't like certain pieces of gear simply because of the look and you don't want to download the mod that changes the look, which you can do, I recommend it. Um, you can put on, say, the crown. It's a 6-6-6. Six, six, and six. It's not quite as good, but again, you earned it. It's your crown. Why not run around with that little fucker around? It does look badass, but you are really going to be better off with the 8, the 8, the 8. It's on you, though. Notice that um, we have a, have a penalty because of the mutagen tiles right now. 
Notice um, Cloak of Resistance plus six, one of the best cloaks out there for six, six, and six protection across the board. That doesn't mean that's the one you have to stick to because we're going to give you rings, and one of those rings gives you the ability to the res uh, resistance um, plus five. Which ones do I like? You have to get yourself the Ring of Circumstances. That's the biggie. And then the Greater Ring of Ultimate Protection, Ring of Law if you're lawful, Ring of Chaos if you're chaotic, Ring of Blur if you just want to have blur on you all the time. Great Dreamer Smile's a solid choice. Again, there's a great Ring of Balance if you're true neutral, which I think I made my character in this run. Um, you really have some really good choices here, but the Ring of Circumstances is the must-have. Uh, other thing that I'm missing, by the way, is an Elixir. Type in Elixir. This is a gift from one of your uh, artisans, Bakken. If you get this, you have to be the one that drinks it. Yeah, anyone else can, but whoever drinks it gets a plus two to everything. This is another way for me to get your stats higher. To get your ring of circumstances to work, I need a force rest. So let's actually just do that real quick. Close it. Notice that you have these toggles on. Well, what toggles would I activate? You can only activate four. What kind of character is this? Well, you're a deck-based character, aren't you? Well, you better get Cat's Grace up. You don't need intelligence for stuff? Maybe, maybe not. How about armor? You definitely want extra armor. You want extra uh, charisma? That gives you extra HP, remember? That's not bad. That's totally worth And maybe you want to have extra strength. That would be the fourth thing to pick. Uh, that's this guy down here. Or maybe you want wisdom. Maybe you just want all your will saves to be plus one. Again, on you. I can't tell you what to do. Maybe you want to run faster, do more damage. DC checks that your spell is probably not for you. Uh, you could increase your intelligence. It would give you more spells a day. It's not amazing, but it is there. Uh, I recommend, honestly, strength. So we've got strength, we've got dex, we've got armor, we've got charisma. All the stuff that's going to increase your physical stats in a way that makes you really, really happy. And again, that's pretty badass. The charisma, remember, that was the other bump that I could get you so we get to a plus 10. Because that's 200, because level 20, that's 10 per level of HP for being undead. And a plus 10 to your fortitude. See the undead creature 10? That's coming from this right there. That's not bad. Reflexes are looking better than ever. Got a nice solid plus 15 here. And again, that looking really pretty. I thought I could have got that higher. What am I missing? Oh, the mutagen's at the level eight. So what we need to do is come over here. I want to take all my buffs off me uh, so that you drink the true mutagen. And the true mutagen is this bastard here. See that? That's the one you want at this point. You never touch the other pieces of shit. So once you get true mutagen, you never go back. But you got two of them a day. Check it once. And that's your guy right there. 20 hour buff. 8, 8, and well, 8, but doesn't matter. And again, that's how I managed to get you to a 16. And again, we're losing out. Oh god, we only got a plus 15. We're totally screwed. This build is crap. Start all over. I'm just kidding. But the point is, is we could have done this with a robe. This would have gone up one higher. Okay, you see that? It's because of the dodge 16. That's the 16 in here. That's why this says 15. It's because the armor is limiting you but then you would lose 20 HP. Again, up to you, and you would lose out the armor bonus. Again, up to you, but you can cast Mage Armor on yourself, and that's not gonna lose that much. Hell, we could even give you Braces of Armor Class plus eight, and you would actually be pretty good to go. So again, we have a variety of options for you here. Let's get you some Bracers. Like. I'm gonna do A. And give you like the braces of armor class plus eight gears rules kind of fun braces of the deflection chiron's touch that's probably all you really care about on those let's talk about armor okay so if you don't want the royal guardian remember because it is limiting you it is nice armor plus eight armor okay that's not bad and 20 extra hp and I'm getting 15 of that 16 you're doing real well don't kid yourself that's a solid touch attack and we're not done yet so again, you're doing fine, but if you really don't want to wear the hat, for example, we got the Dark Master's robes here. You can take that hat off and put something else in its place, and I give you an 8 here and an 8 here. Now, sadly, the Wisdom's going to suffer. Will's going to go down. If you don't like that, we have this choice here where we can keep the hat, get rid of that, and put on, say, the Envy of the Master. Uh, wait, no. Uh, yeah, Envy of the Master. Oh, yeah, I'm missing something. Sorry. I didn't give myself another robe. Uh, get rid of that, and let's say, hey, search, not that robe. No, 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 no. There's the robe of the true master, and that's the one I was looking for. There it is, sorry. That's what I wanted. Uh, instead of the envy of the master, you want the robe of the true master, because why? Plus five deflection bonus. Spell resistance 18. 
four resistance to your saves across the board. And again, that's not amazing, but then now I don't need to have that cloak of resistance plus six. Yes, it would go up two, two, and two, but it's kind of wasteful. I could put something else in there. We have good cloaks. There's a cloak of the uh, Noxious Veil. As a resistance 30, and I get Acid Fog, a spell you can't cast twice a goddamn day, and I can stand in that fog all fucking day long, baby, with this cloak on. And that's nice. Watch their flesh just melt off their face while you're casting spells and choppity choppity, baby. Having all kinds of fun. And again, decent armor, decent spell, well, decent, okay spell resistance, and a nice saving throw bonus, and spell pen. Not that you care because you're not casting spells on bad guys. Don't like that. Again, go back to your uh, Dark Master's robe. Get rid of the hat, and again, you see your wisdom go down. That sucks. But now maybe you really feel like you're missing out on some uh, resistances. Maybe you want that cloak of resistance plus six. Boom, boom, boom. That's not great, but it's still way better than it was a moment ago. Not impressed with that. Maybe you want to get the other ring, the greater uh, ring of ultimate protection. Plus five resistances. Boom, boom, boom. Not plus six like the, ro oh, the cloak here, but five, five, and five. That's pretty fucking close, and it's got a plus five deflection bonus to it. Remember, we switched out on robes. We don't have that plus five deflection anymore. Well, here you go, baby. And spell resistance 24. That was better than 18. And while I don't need spell pen, I got DR2 slash dash here. This is a solid two ring combo. Don't need that one. You can get yourself the Great Dreamer Smile. That's a bonus to your swings. All of your swings. That's a plus two luck bonus to attacks and damage. And um, this is something else. Spell pen, we don't care about. Oh, saving throws. Saving throws. Plus two across the board for your save. Boom, boom, boom. And that's a luck bonus. So again, bringing you back up to where you need to be. So get that uh, cloak back on. Now you're suddenly not that bad. Again, a variety of ways of doing things. And you may see, well, my armor's kind of crap right now because I only got, you know, all that stuff there. We have yet to put on your braces of armor class plus eight. 49 is a solid armor. And you haven't buffed up with everything yet. We still got, uh, you can drink a... Um, uh, cast a bark skin spell on yourself or drink a bark skin potion uh, if, if uh, deflection is not something that you have a lot of or any of you can get yourself potions of uh, sh uh, shield of faith remember you'll cast them at, at full strength and then some will be level 20 for you and it will last twice as long for you so instead of it being a one minute buff or a plus two to your armor it'll be a plus five to your armor it'll be a 40 minute buff I'm saying those are fucking cheap you'll have those by the droves in your kitty so you can always just chug a potion run in the battle chug a potion run in the battle you will be a potion guy it will be your bread and butter uh and again a solid solid combo and again we've left your hat slot open now because we've taken that one off to give you the robes here but if you didn't want those again that's still a solid choice if you don't mind the look and switching back to the um royal guardian for the extra hp i'll happily take those I feel like i'm missing something here what happened Oh, the true mutagen lord my intelligence uh, my charisma that's why my health went back down sorry i knew there was a reason it was 323 a moment ago true mutagen lowers you intelligence wisdom and charisma two points two points two points that's okay uh, that, that's to, to mirror the strength going up the the strength goes up the intelligence goes down the wisdom goes down when the dex goes up the con goes up the charisma goes down that's what you're seeing here and again that's still a solid solid tune uh, bracers at this point now that since we got armor and there's no need for us to have bracers of armor class plus eight because again you've got the plus eight from the um, royal guardian that you're wearing feel free to slop on something like charon's touch a spell that you don't have access to harm once a day and greater false life twice a day that's some extra temp hp bitch that's amazing don't like that one maybe you don't want to waste your shield spell castings on you the braces of deflection plus two again armor went up plus two You'll chug the potion to make it better, but you also have shield spell twice a day. Don't like that one. Again, we have this one here, the Gears Rule. This is a little weird one. Normally, it's for the bomb throwers, but this is a, any alchemist really benefits from this. Bonus all your bomb attacks, blah, blah, blah. Bonus to your saves against mind effect. You need that because your will sucks. Uh, and then death effects, paralysis, disease. You're probably immune to most of these things for being undead anyway. And you resist fatigue longer. I don't think fatigue is an issue for you because, again, you're undead, but I could be wrong on that. And definitely you don't want to be fatigued or exhausted. So the immunity to both of those at level 20 is power. And then you have these weird-ass abilities that are tied into it, like bigger bomb damage. That's not you. Also, fast healing, immunity to poison, death effects, paralysis, stun, and disease, and target bombing mixture while you turn this little uh, doggle on. Weird stuff in there. It's not amazing, but I, I prefer the Charon's Touch myself. And you have a variety of other things you put down here. And do not discount the fact that you have the ability to chuck bombs. Even though you're not a bomb guy, these will hit for some solid AOE damage. So you'll have uh, Alchemist Fire and uh, Acid Flask aplenty to chuck. 
and do well. Last thing to talk about will be uh, weapons. And honestly, if you're going daggers, you might as well just capitalize on all daggers. Uh, so I'm going to grab everything that's named. Some of these are not going to be daggers. Some of these are going to be punching daggers, as you see here. Uh, so it'll be obvious when you look at them, though. And I'm just grabbing the named ones. But that doesn't mean it's the only ones out there that are worth a damn. There are good ones and there's great ones. I wanted to show you that there's a, I'm going to grab this one because it is one of those examples of a one that's an amazing one that's just a regular. Notice the manifested dagger and the manifested punching dagger. That comes from your psychic uh, builds nowadays. Now, let's take these pieces of shit off and let's find you some decent daggers. Here's an arcane protector. And there's another one that goes lightning. I'm going to go by uh, price. Uh, notice the one that's got the weird little handle on it. That's a punching dagger. See that? So you can kind of tell ahead of time. Always check, but uh, there's some really weird ones to match up here. So uh, weirdly, and I can't stress this enough, um, there's some fun daggers to be had. Uh, that's the only one that doesn't have the weird handle. That is a punching dagger. Trouble solver. Interesting. Chaos shard. Frailty. Trouble maker. Mm, no, that's not the one I wanted. Where is it? Lightning. There it is. Lightning does. So these two as a combo, look at your armor. You're at 32 right now. See that? Lightning Duelist is giving you one dodge. That's this guy here. The other one's giving you three dodge. That's the Arcane Protector. The Arcane Protector is the one that makes you immune to nausea. Now you're immune to poison anyway. Not necessarily nausea, but definitely poison because you're undead. That means you can stand in Stinking Cloud. So find yourself a, a wand of Stinking Cloud and love it. Uh, but this plus one dagger, this one's also a plus one dagger that does electric damage. These are not impressive for attacking with, as you can see. You're swinging okay. You have spells and buffs that'll buff you beyond your ability to hit stuff anyway, so I'm not worried about that. But these are lackluster. These are when you need to turtle up. Because why? Because it gave you some decent armor. And again, this would not be the combo that I would give you here. Again, I would not use the Great Dreamer Smile more than I would use the uh, Ring of Greater Ultimate Protection. Then I would take the uh, Cloak of Noxious Veil. That's how I would do it. Why? Because that five deflection bonus is free. Yes, you could drink a potion. Remember I told you your potions are going to be awesome. If you want to go that route, that's fine. You don't need this ring then as much because that plus five deflection is not going to get any better. But I like knowing that it's always on me. I don't have to worry about constantly chugging a potion. You know what I mean? And that's why you have that little looper there. And again, I love having spells that I don't normally have access to. But like I said, if you need a turtle up, 37 touch armor is a solid turtle in this game for a solo build. Not convinced. Uh, other stuff that you can do for dagger fun. Uh, I find a lot of them uh, based on their names or mission. There's one that's going to sound like death. That's going to fit perfectly with it. Chaos are frail. There you go. These are n nice one-two combo. I can't tell you which one to put in what hand. So there's differences here. But notice that. So we have an, a plus five undead bane. And we have a plus one speed ghost touch. And it also gives you the ability to bestow curse once a day. It's a free spell. And this one here gives you um, additional positive energy damage on every strike. That's a solid kill to an undead motherfucker. And again, solid attacks, good damage, as you can see, plus 19, plus 23. These will chop through some dudes even before you start talking about sneak attack alone. Don't uh, convince on that one. How about we grab you the deceiver? This is the one that gives you the five foot reach. Uh, wait, no. Yeah, it reached increased by five feet. I'm looking at the wrong thing. There you go. Plus three, and it's an agile dagger, so notice that your damage went up. So instead of it being 28 versus, this is a plus three. These are plus one, so these are down two points, but make sure this was a 21. Why is this one a 28? Because it's using all that beautiful, beautiful dexterity modifier instead of that lame nine strength. That's why, it's because it's an agile. Now that may be the one that you don't pair with anything because it's good by itself, but remember we grabbed that double uh, fisted ability, whatever the hell it was called, double something, double strike. Uh, and again, if you find another agile dagger, which I think we have, I think it works. 28, troublemaker, agile, 27. The reason it's lower, this is a plus two, this is a plus three. That's why it's only one point lower. You see that? So this one is getting the 16 dexterity for damage output. You're a chopping motherfucker. Remember, this is not be. Uh, I don't think this is including your um, Piranha Strike yet. I could be mistaken on that. But even if it is including it, you're chopping like a Ginsu Chef like no one's business, even without your sneak attack. That was the goal. So Agile, Agile. Nice combo here. So we got Deceiver and Troublemaker. 
Sounds like they are made in heaven. And again, five foot extra range with this one, so it's seven foot range weapon now. This one is also gonna be seven foot weapon. This is really, really nice for you to reach either A over a teammate if you were doing a teammate build or if you had like pets out or some shit like that. Or if you just wanna keep a distance with somebody because maybe if you hit them with a close melee attack, you get poisoned, for example. It happens all the time. But having that extra reach, now you're at a reach weapon category and that's huge. Uh, next one over here, uh, again, I have really good choices like a Brilliant Energy Team Dagger. I wanna show you that one just to show it to you. This is one of the only non-named ones that I like. This is the Brilliant Energy one, look at this one. This uh, cuts through non-living matter. So again, if uh, it's armor or shield bonuses to the guys are ignored, it's basically a touch attack weapon. Awesome, but notice this part. This is why this is not your only weapon of choice because it will not harm an undead, it will not hurt a construct, and if it's an object, it won't hurt them either. So this is not the one you use when you're fighting those types of guys. But keep that shit in your back pocket somewhere because that's going to be amazing. When you come across anyone else and you're just having a hard time hitting them and they don't fall into those three categories, you should have had that in your fucking hand because it's like butter right through their fucking armor. It doesn't matter that they have a high dex, you're going to hit hard shit anyway. I'm not worried about you missing. All I'm worried about is you uh, having someone that's like fully plated up with a sword and board, tower shield, and everything else and bust besides. And he has like an armor over here of like the 60s. Whereas his touch armor is probably like 20. You're totally cheering right through that motherfucker with that dagger. Uh, other ones to, to talk about, like I like the Edict Dagger. Uh, honorable mention to the Darkwing Dagger for a, another reason I want to point it out. I'm not going to put it in here, but I'm just showing it to you for a reason. It's not only a plus five weapon, I'm sorry, plus four weapon. It gives you a bonus to stealth and watch this. Any weapon you wield, two wielding weapons here now, you get an extra sneak attack die. It's not amazing, but that puts you up another 1d6 plus one. Just saying, and both weapons will get that buff because you have that in your little fisties. That's not a bad little weapon. I'm not saying you're going to put it in there with this one. There's a better one with Edict. Notice what Edict does. First, it's a speed weapon, so you don't need haste on you. You got an extra attack. You're up to four over here. We're about to get three more on that side. Solid, solid swing, plus four. Mithril, which means it's considered silver. And then a penalty every time you hit them uh, or to, to their will save for one minute. Now, I don't know if it stacks, but it's at least a minus three for the first time you hit those bastards. And why is that important? Because if you had a caster on your team, you could capitalize on that shit by, by softening him up. Notice, uh, where is it at? Yeah, Shard this is another example, one that I'd probably pair with the Edict. It's not the best swinging weapon, but notice it has a chance to confuse them on a hit. Well, how do you, uh, is it a chance? Chances are there is a saving throw. Guess what kind of saving throw it's going to be? Oh, uh, yeah, it will. And now we just lower their will with the first few strikes on that fucking side of the weapon. And now this weapon here is going to confuse, 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 and chances are it's going to land more often than not. You can see how this is a nice combo. Seems to be that they made matches with daggers like this, where it's going to be like a one-two punch, like they make sense Arcane Protector and the Lightning Duelist and the Dormition and the Frailty. They seem to fall uh, under a pattern of uh, a theme, if you will, based on their name. And again, I can't tell you which is the one you're going to use the most. Again, I love Turtle Mode. 37 armor is hard to turn down when you jump down to a 33. But you're not fighting stuff that does touch attacks all the time. And there's other ways to buff your character besides. Now let's talk about that. Uh, in this list, Long Arm, Fire Belly, Shield... Uh, can't do any of the large reduced persons. True strikes. You'd be surprised how often that's going to be helpful for you. Um, maybe a cure spell every now and again, or maybe you want to have expeditious retreat. So you can run a little faster. What, why not? Over here, fiery runes. Most recent blood arm. I'm taking all the new ones just to take a look at them. Resist energy. Remember, you are susceptible to fire and cold with your build, uh, as well as a bunch of other shit because you're undead, and you have spell vulnerability for abjuration. So having some protection from fire and cold on tap is amazing for you. Protection from arrows is busted. I don't think it ever works. Invisibility is useful, but remember, the moment you attack, you get seen. False life is useful, but again, greater false life is better, and we have that in bracer form. Delay poison, you're not poisoned ever, so that's not an issue. Cure moderates, that's not bad. Buffs until, obviously not bears and nerds, but the buffs work until you get gear that's better. The blur... Bark skin, unless you want to cast it from a potion. Both of those are in potion form, same with aid. They're expensive, but again, who else is using this shit? You're selling off all the gear that you don't want. You I mean maybe you'll give some to some of your teammates because again, they're going to be whiny crybabies that you have to take them with you. So make sure they're kitted out a little bit, but don't give them the best of the best of the best. Hey, coming to you, and if you don't need it and they don't need it, you sell it. You buy more potions, more scrolls. That's your goal too. But again, many of these things fall under scrolls or potion form. Blur, bark skin, aid. Those are all potions. Same with all your buff spells, all potions. So you got and even your cures, all potions plenty in buffs, even resist energies on a potion form. 
got plenty of buffs that come from potions. If you can afford just having 10 of every kind of potion and you can carry them, remember the bags of holding, that's power, then you really, any time you come to a room or a big uh, area where you're fighting, you go through your pack first, you know, earlier save, obviously, and say, what potions do I need to put in my list of five that I'm going to use in this fight? This one, that one, that one. Okay, this one, chug, 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 run in, kill everything. Beautiful, run into the next room. Be surprised how easy it is for you to kill shit. I'm going to take Channel Vigor, Countless Eyes, Resonance Skin, just to have the new guys. Uh, Heroism is an amazing potion, also. Uh, remove b uh, blindness, disease, and you're immune to disease, but remove blindness could affect you. So you may want to have one of those in your kitty every now and again. Um, displacement for some solid protection to your character. Haste is AoE, uh, and it's great, but Channel Vigor gets haste for yourself, and that's all you care about anyway. So if anything, just double up on Channel Vigor. Or fly or whatever. Again, you've got plenty of choices for your form. Greater than this. Always greater than this. Stone skin. Uh, freedom of movement. Death ward. That might not be necessary for you because you're undead, but check it. Greater false life. Again, lots and lots of good stuff to pick from. Delay consumption over the flight. Communal stone skin. If you're not on a team, that's garbage. Uh, but again, worth having if you're on a team. Uh, plant shape, maybe. Polymorph, maybe. Elemental body, maybe. Spell resistance, definitely. Remember, this one is a 12 plus your caster level. You're at 20. This is a 32 spell resistance for your character. That's a big spell resistance. Legendary proportions might not work on you. Make sure you have your dinosaur bone to test it. True Sing is awesome. Transformation is amazing for you because uh, you don't usually cast spells anyway. You're just choppity choppity. So buff up, run in, and then just slaughter some shit. That's a plus five to your swings, all of your swings. And gives you an extra attack in your main hand. And gives you some extra fortitude besides. So there's a lot of buff there. Really nice spell. I'd probably pack it at least twice. Uh, but that's on you. Heal, another amazing spell. And I think heal does work on you, even if you're undead. But be careful with that shit. Uh, giant form would be something to check out. Dragon kind form is something to check out. Check out all your forms just to prove that they work. Uh, being undead and all. But the point is, is you have a variety of cool stuff that you get to do. Uh, I want to do a, a quick rest. Do, 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 do. There we go. Okay. Just so we can see what's some what's stuff. What's now, now again, I'm going to switch over to my best defense weapons. Give me a terrible attack swing. Come on, guys. This is a two plus hour video. We need to hurry this up. I'm not going to show you everything or anything, really, for that matter. Uh, more than just to walk into a room and show you how your uh, sneak attacks and stuff are going to do. I didn't see Sense Vitals in our list. Did I miss that? Could have sworn Sense Vitals was something that we could cast on ourselves. Maybe I'm thinking of a different build. Maybe I'm thinking Ranger. Uh, let's take a quick Trail. look at that. Because if that's true, then you're actually not as good at um, DPS as I thought. What about a level 2 spell? We don't have Sense Vitals. Well, poop. Maybe I should have grabbed that uh, accomplished sneak attacker. Oh, well. You're still fine. I'm not worried. Uh, but before you go into a room, uh, make sure you have the stuff on that you care about. So we have Crippling Strike or Bleeding Attack. You don't have to uh, get to have both. Uh, make sure you chug your mutagen. You can see it's on already, so I don't need to rechug it. So we're still fine. Uh, that's the greater one. So we need to get rid of that master. Let's put this one over here. Let's take a... Um, Mose in the middle of winter. Uh, anyway. Um, Heart of Ira. If you're fighting and you're on a solo team like you're running right now, there is no reason not to have that on unless you're trying to stealth into the area. Because once they get in that aura, they will take damage to fights on like Donkey Kong. But until that time, you shut it off. This also makes you immune to fatigue and exhaustion. One of the reasons I love that necklace. If that's not your thing, again, that is not the necklace I want for you. I like this one. Chiron's aim, but I also can understand the uh, appeal for the necklace of double crosses, extra sneak attack love. Solid choices. And there is gear in the game that gives you sneak attack besides the dagger. Necklace is one, the dagger is one. Uh, as a matter of fact, let's just do it this way. Go here. Um, uh, reset all the filters and we just say sneak. Like that. River Fox Memento Pendant. Uh, sneak attack damage. Goes from 1d6 to 3d6 if they're flat footed. Or if they're not in combat, excuse me. Which I think is what flat footed means. But again, if you can flank them, you get 1d6. If 
you can sneak attack them by being flat footed, it's 3d6. I think that's what that's telling you. But again, that's a next slot. So again, wooden stack with a necklace of double crosses, but it's here. Uh, so is the gloves of the death dealer. You put those on, you get another 1d6 of sneak attack dice. You get a guy mowing outside your fucking house. Dark wind, sneak attack, that's the dagger that you have. That gives you a sneak attack for both weapons in your hands, as long as you got dark wind in one of them. And again, so you could get another two, three, four, five, six of, of damage coming your way just from having that. And there's nothing stopping you from casting a scroll or a wand of sense vitals on yourself. You have the potential to do that. I'm not saying you will, but I'm saying it is an option. I'm just going to move this down here because I don't like it. Freeing up stuff. Let's go inside uh, with a nice buffed up character. How would I normally buff my character? Uh, I would... Um, uh, long arm could be useful. Shield is a decent one. So this is retreat is useful. Uh, I would get myself uh, probably a bark skin if I don't have that already. If I know what kind of elemental damage I might be taking, I'll make sure I pre buff up against that. Maybe I'll do aid, but instead of aid, you have heroism. Well, instead of heroism, do you have anything better? Nope. So heroism is. And that's not enough. That's not nowhere near enough. But again, just to show you where you're at. You're at a 67 armor, 47 armor when it's flat footed, 42 against touch. It was my best turtle build, of course, and I'm not done yet. Remember, I haven't cast uh, Greater Invis on me or Displacement. Again, those are a 50% chance to strip. Just miss my ass. And you know you want that shit. You also want like, freedom of movement, so paralysis is never an issue. On that, though, if you go here and you look under your abilities and you look for your undead, you will see that it tells you what being undead is. You got a curse, this is what you're susceptible to. Undead creature, this is what you're going to be immune to. Bleeds, death effects, disease, paralysis, poison, sleep, and stun. There's a variety of shit you're immune to, and that's at level one, Junior. Just saying. Solid, solid tune. Now decide if you're going to bleed the guy every sneak attack or are you going to lower his strength every sneak attack. Again, that's on you. You'll decide depending on the battle that you have in front of you. I could sneak on the motherfucker because I had greater invis on. No, it's because I had fast stealth. I was actually extra zippy when I was running around, too, doing that shit, right? If this locks up like this, this happens to me all the time. Okay? Just go click, click. You're back into combat mode like you should be. Turn-based, okay? Uh, a common thing to do. Sneak attack. Run across. Minus 2 to strength. 72 sneak attack. Uh, 76 plus 11. Oh, and again, that's not my best. That's just my best right now. I could have grabbed 1d6 more, plus 1. If I grabbed the complex sneak attacker, I could have switched to the daggers, giving me another 1d6 plus 1. That could have made me at 13d6 plus 13. I could have had the necklace on. That's another 2d6. And one of those necklaces doesn't work right. I'll be real clear on this. It does 2d6, but it will not do 2d6 plus 2. So if you see another 2d6 sneak attack, that's why. And I think that's the the, the other necklace, the... the what's it called the necklace of double crosses yeah so th i think that one's glitchy the other one i think works fine the river fox pendant guy works fine and again you do really good for your skills just to show you your skills right now you got really good skills right now lore nature and lore religion straight up suck but these other ones are decent and if you wanted knowledge arcana to be better you could have pumped it instead of knowledge world or vice versa or you could have taken all these away from one of these and bumped up lore nature or lore religion up to you but i don't think you want to spread yourself too thin for a solo build, though, the key ones are always the same. Perception, because you want to spot all the treasure and all the traps. Trickery, because you want to be able to disable all the traps and pick all the loot up from the locked boxes. Uh, and then persuasion, because it's your kingdom. If you got those three things covered, you're probably fine. If I could throw in a fourth, it would probably be, honestly, use magic device. So that you can use most of the items that you come across as far as wands and scrolls. And that's your guy. And again, I'm not going to show you everything because you know how to play the game already, man. I don't need to reemphasize it. There's not really amazing tricks to be had here other than set up your sneak attack. Notice, though, that, like, again, stuff that's like special free spells. Acid Fog. I got uh, Greater Heroism. Uh, that came from the gloves I think I'm wearing. And again, that's a plus 40 year swing, not a plus 2 like the Heroism that I have on me right now. Or did I not cast Heroism? I thought I did. Didn't I? Yeah. Who the hell are you, bastard? Oh, tell me that doesn't... Is it because I'm undead that that doesn't work? You can't heroism if you're undead. Oh, balls. 
That sucks ass. What about aid? Holy shit, because you're undead, you can't cast a lot of these things. Oh, that sucks, man. Uh, well, whatever. Well, again, that's the learning process. We figure out stuff that you can't cast on you. And again, uh, I'm going to give myself it. I'm going to do it right now. Um, dinosaur bones. And diamond dust. Diamonds, diamond dust. I think you only need diamond dust, but that's for the your stone skin. Just so you have them, so you're not... Um, trying to cast spells and going, oh, it doesn't work. It's because you don't have the material components. But none of those have material components. Stone skin, though, does, and so does your um, uh, legendary proportions, which, like I said, I don't think works for you. That's this guy here. Let's see that. Because you're undead, you, you can't legendary proportions. That sucks. Um, there is one of those spells that you can cast. I think Frightening Aspect is one. You don't have it. But you could cast Frightening Aspect on an undead character, and I think you do grow. I think it does work on that, because you don't have to be a person technically speaking. Uh, Righteous Might might be another one, but I can't remember. And again, you'd have to find scrolls of those. In fact, let's just gift us our those goddamn scrolls. Let's do Righteous and search scrolls. And then, um, what was the other one? The shit. Frightening aspect, I think is what it's called. Scroll off. Frightful aspects, frightful aspect. Okay. And again, we don't know this, so again, we have to prove it to ourselves. So we'll go to your scrolls, do like that. Okay. And you would have, let's click save. Uh, righteous Might. Okay. Righteous Might works. And again, that's a bigger size category. Now notice something here. Well, that's frightful aspect. I thought it said Righteous Might. Frightful Aspect, Frightful Aspect, sorry. Frightful Aspect works. Uh, plus six size bonus to your strength. Remember that stacks with your Mutagen. And that stacks with our Inherent from our Potion from Bakken. That stacks with our plus eight belt. Uh, and then that plus two from our ring. So we're getting all kinds of strength up right now. Who thought a character with a strength of eight by the end of the build was going to finish with a strength of 34 for most of its fights? That's badass. And again, it gives you even more than just that. I mean, Frightful Aspect, I mean, it's down here, but you can look at it, shit. Uh, and again, um, size bonus to strength and con, you don't get that. Uh, natural armor bonus, so that's probably working. That's why you're up to a goddamn 72 over here. DR10 slash magic. Again, if you cast um, stone skin on yourself, you have DR10 slash adamantine. It's, again, it's not stacking. It's layers. It's If it's a magic weapon, it goes right through. But was it an adamantine weapon? No. Well, then I have DR10 slash adamantine from stone skin. That's still protecting me. If it's an adamantine weapon but not magic, which is unlikely, but if it was... Then I'd have this one protecting me. If it's magic and adamantine, which again, it could be quite common, then this has not helped me at all. But there's another uh, piece of gear out there that'll help protect you. Several, matter of fact, like the boots, there's a hat, there's all kinds of helmets, all kinds of shit that gets you DR5 slash bludgeoning or DR10 slash slashing or whatever. So again, layers. Uh, spell resistance equal to 10 plus half your caster level. That's kind of crap. But again, we have a better uh, spell resistance spell on our own that we could cast and probably should do so and you're scaring targets near you because you're frightful aspecting them. So again, there's that. So again, you got plenty of bang for your buck from that one spell. Now let's check, hopefully I saved. I wanna check the other spell. Yeah, so I wanna check uh, Righteous Might. Nope, so Righteous Might is a no-go, but Frightful Aspect is fine. So just find scrolls you want or Frightful Aspect and go to town. Again, you're going to be really good at all the trickery stuff. And again, from level 3 on, you'll be the one doing all those, especially on a solo run. But even if you're with the team still, shut off the XP share for people that are in the party and shut off XP share for the people that aren't doing the actual skill check. It should always be you doing the skill check if you can do it. Even if it takes you hair wisdom. Well, actually, we just found out we can't do hair wisdom shit. Um, even if uh, like a bard song or whatever is what you need, have the bard sing next to you give you some competence or whatever. That's always something you can do. But the chances are, again, with you running solo, you're going to need skills, skills, and more skills. Gear that gives you buff to your skills will be key. And again, you will be fine. Really, really good build. I mean, it's tough as hell. It's got plenty of armor. got all the solo potential that you really need. I would have left more spells, like offensive spells, but eh, whatever, potato, potato. For a sneak thief that has the ability to pre-buff up like this, you almost can't go wrong. 
You got more than enough attacks. I mean, Jesus Christ, man. You got three and three attacks guaranteed. So six attacks in a combat round if you have a full attack on you. They're going to straight up die. And if you ever want to prove that to yourself, go to your combat log. Look under your attack and see one out of six. One out of seven if you have like a speed weapon or haste on. And again, we have the ability to do that with a spell called... Where did you go, you little bastard? Here. Channel Vigor. Know what these ones do, though. Again, you got to keep track of this shit. Because torso, you can't read the bottom of the tooltip. You see that? Spirit. Uh, uh, mind. Knowledge and perception and ranged attacks and limbs, that's the one we want in the top one here. That's our haste, but only for you. And again, you prove it on yourself, you see it right there. Okay. Not amazing, not the, the best thing in the world, but again, that's extra armor, better uh, reflexes, and extra attack around if you don't have a speed weapon. Just uh, an amazing screw you build for a uh, king of women who try to solo this game. Highly recommended. I'm not going to go in any further. We're already in the two and a half plus hours here, guys. But this this basically shows you what I wanted to show you for this build. Know that your uh, the pack is going to be full. I mean, you're going to have many of the bags of holding. Now, these are probably unrealistic, but anytime you can find a bag of holding and you can afford to buy it, you're buying it. Because, A, you're the one that's always running solo. You're always the one running gear back to your base to sell it. So how do you do that? Bags of holding. So you can carry that fucking shit because you never want to be overweight. Um... On that, remember I said that there's a, a good reason to want these robes of uh, Dark Master for the 8 and the 8 and uh, ignoring the hat. I wanted to show you the one more hat. There's a really good piece of headwear in the game for you, for someone that needs skills. And it's the professor's hat, I want to say something like that. Let's see if I can find it. Expert's hat? Maybe. Philosopher's hat. No. Professor's hat. I was right. Oops. You want the hat that looks like a big boulder derby. On the goddamn motor. Go the fuck away! Jesus Christ, dude. How many times do you need to mow in front of my goddamn window? Uh, what the hat does, uh, for those of you that don't know, let me show you what I'm talking about. This guy right here, the professor's hat. Okay. What the hat does is it basically is like a bag of holding. So personally speaking, your your carrying capacity goes up 200 more. So literally, if you were an overweight tune with like full plate armor or whatever, give them the professor's hat and bam, this thing will jump down 200 points. That's really, really nice. So again, for especially a, a very weak character like her without their buffs and stuff that she has on her, she wouldn't be able to carry Norse near what she normally can. This is a solid upgrade. This is one I usually give to Jubilos because he's a gnome with a, a low strength. But notice what else it does plus two competence bonus on all skill checks. So if you don't have a competence bonus right now on your skill checks, everything's going up another two. Professor's hat, professor's hat, professor's hat across the board. You just got a plus two across the board. That's a solid upgrade. But again, it takes away from the intelligence, the wisdom, and the charisma hat. You can't wear them at the same time, but that's why we have those robes. And that's why we swap those out and grab the bracers of armor class plus eight. Where the hell they are. So that you still have a solid armor. Again, all kinds of permutations. I'm going to tell you how to dress up your character. But again, she looks fucking tits. I'm just saying. She literally looks like she could be uh, uh who's that 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 the, the English villain bad guy, the one that drinks the potion. Uh, uh, Doctor Jekyll, Mister Hyde. She looks like uh, Doctor Jekyll, Mister Hyde's uh, uh, evil sister with knives. To me, perfect character, and I think you would have fun. And she chugs potions all the time, so that's a perfect fit. Anyway, that's enough ranting and raving. My name is Brother Mean. Please like, subscribe, comment down below. Hopefully this was the build you were looking for for whoever it was that was looking for the Undead Vivisectionist build. I think this is what you were shooting for. Uh, if not, again, feel free to post below. Tell me what it is that I should have made for a build. And anyone else's build that I have missed, again, feel free to post below to remind me. Uh, reminders are always appreciated. But with that, I'll see you guys soon. Bye now.